What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 94, here with a full uh, four co- hosts together. I'm like, dude, th- when's the last time this happened? We got the professor back. Joel's back from his uh, shenanigans over at PsychoFest. We'll hear about that later on. <clears throat> what up, y'all? I'm what Anthony. What's up? I'm, yeah, I'm telling you guys, I'm Anthony. <laughs> Hello. Uh, to- and tonight we're joined by a very special guest, another Casey. Two weeks in a row, got two Casey's on. Oh, yeah, double up. The, <clears throat> what's sorry? What's going on tonight? That was even crazier because we got two odious Casey's, dude. Mm-hmm. We got <laughs> Casey Brand from the Odious Construct and the Ritual Aura, and Casey and, from Odious yeah, Mortem. Announce me. Yes. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. Hell yeah. What's going on, Casey Brand? I'll call you KCB. I'll try and call you KCB. <laughs> what up, player? I think he's muted. Can you hear us? Oh, he's muted. How about okay. now? Oh, there you go. All right. I'm good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good, brother. Good, Thanks dude. for coming on, dude. Hell yeah. Glad to have you. Um, let's do the quick uh, plug section here. Battleforgecoffee.com. Get your fix. Caffeine. Homies and deeds of flesh, love them to death. They're killing it. Support the underground. Um, we don't have any merch for you guys still, but that's it's not valid. true. Oh shit! Oh shit! We have two. We have two shirts left. At the the store is down. <laughs> I've been but telling them. We got one XL left, and one small left. All right, so Just hit me up. Hit me up for an XL and XL a small, or the dude. small. I'll, yeah. I'll take the XL, dude. Oh Boom. yeah, dude. Well, there it is. Is that a live bag? Are we going to live bagging? I think that counts, doesn't it? I have a live bag. All right now. All right now. I'm just kidding. Maybe later. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hell yeah. And it's then twenty uh, bucks. Okay, so we this, <laughs> just hit up the professor if you uh, find what? him on the socials. He'll what? set you up. Once the Venmo payment goes through, just let me know. Put the music back. <laughs> Appreciate the live bagging. Oh, yeah. And uh, what else? Oh, we we don't have the tour to plug anymore, dude. I was gonna nope. say there's a third thing, but it's not the shredding. The virus tour is over. Done. Let's go into let's go. The into virus, it was the virus was shredded. Virus was shredded. super shredded <laughs> and spreaded. So, and that's <laughs> about your guys' like I don't know what's your favorite shows and pluses and minuses and all that fun stuff with either one of you. Dude, I thought Cupertino was sick. I think Cupertino, was probably, Cupertino and um. What was the one in LA? Long Beach. Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah. That one was probably my second favorite. Wasn't there a sold out one somewhere in like Denver or something? I don't know if it was sold out. Was that fake? I think it might have been fake. <laughs> um what I heard, I actually saw a screenshot with the promoter. Apparently all his events on his online page said sold out, so they were like we we oh, saw shit. that information and then uh promoted it as such, but he told us behind the scenes it wasn't sold out, but he did sell a lot of tickets, and there were a lot of people there. It was a very small venue, but I do want to shout it out. Trailside Saloon it had great sound. Yeah. It was just a good venue, great outside area. And uh, so if you're tech death, you should play the Trailside and get in touch with. I don't remember who the promoter was, but I can find Zach, out. Zach Beecroft. We've I actually, Odious and Ethereus, we played there a few times before, and Zach's taken care of us really well, so... Yeah, um, they're actually extending that whole venue. I guess they're knocking out that far wall where the the stage was, and they, mm. I guess they took over the, the the suite next door or whatever. So it's going to be like a huge ass fucking thing now. Oh hell yeah! Um, but I don't I don't know when that's happening. But before we dig deeper, dude, we didn't do any of uh, KCB's plugs. What's my plugs? Well, yeah, where 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 can people find uh, merch for uh, oh, the bands that uh, and all that shit? You can do. Do I send you a link? How does that work? Is it just on? Is it Big Cartel? Yeah, Big Cartel. Um, a lot of uh, odious stuff can be on or is on Artisan Era Store. And then okay. actually, I don't think I've ever looked at the Ritual Aura thing before. Uh, the Ritual Aura. <clears throat> Shout out Band- Barnes Band- Chernobyl Band- just gifted its sub. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. That's a fucking nice. great name, by the way. What is it? Rick? Yeah, there's there's stuff on Bandcamp for Ritual Aura too. Oh yeah, so check Looks it out. Support that though. shit. Yes, sir. We're dropping a new album next year, early next year. So there'll be a lot more, a lot more stuffs. Oh yeah, nice dude. So let's hear more about the the 
tour shenanigans. So you guys took it started off where? Tacoma. Right? Yeah. Tacoma. Yeah. Yeah. So... Tacoma, then a day off, and then Seattle. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Where are you based, KCB? Sacramento. Okay, so you're already up there on yeah. on the way that way. Yeah, I mean or that uh sack scene. Yeah, we uh odious more uh odious mortem. <laughs> That's ominous ruin, started. Jesus Christ. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's not even mixing it up with the odious construct, you mix it up with a total <laughs> different band. Yeah. <laughs> um the guitar player of Odious Mortem and me came up to uh meet the band members in Ominous Ruin on um, Monday the first of August, and then we drove up in the R V on the third of when Wednesday the third and then played the first show on the fourth and uh our biggest problem at the beginning was uh, our giant ass guitar rack wouldn't fit into the RV. So we had to take like the wheel section off the rack and then also disassemble the RV door so that it wouldn't like only open till 90. So we had to like literally like take this whole RV apart basically to just Damn. even get going. Um, and then we just like had the, the guitar rack with its doors or the wheels off and like the the doors off the front and back the whole tour which is super sketchy but uh yeah, yeah so i would just definitely like measure the things you're gonna put on the the vehicle you're taking before you start the tour That's right, right. Inside Inside the you, you guys had to do that every night every night no we didn't take anything apart every night we just left things like disassembled slash like uh that's why you guys were using the dolly yeah, exactly. Okay, gotcha. So we're like, people, but you couldn't just access the RV if you guys weren't in it, right? Oh like, no, we rented it off out, out, outdoors. Outdoorsy is the app that they use to to rent it off, and uh, we didn't like know, like we just got it and then loaded it up right away, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, we couldn't really know what what we were getting into. But I'm saying, like at the at the venues and shit, did you have mm -hmm. to? Is there a janky way you had to lock the door, or did the door? Close oh yeah to... so so yeah we we figured it out so that like the door was locked and everything oh, okay. outside of it but um, i was gonna say that would fucking be shitty to have that looming over your head every time you're at a venue like somebody could just walk into our rv right now yeah no Grab i'm not good or... with uh i don't know the names of things but there's like a tube that like the door kind of like goes with and then it like stops it that little tube thing we just like took it off the door so that the door could swing all yeah. the way and we just like okay. taped taped the tube part up to the onto the side of the RV and just left it like that for three weeks. It's like then, a shock. It's a thing. Yeah, with another thing. Yeah. another uh, yeah, whatever so, comes out of it. So for you guys, did you guys plan like that company you used for the RV? I've never really heard of them. Is that like a common thing bands are using now? No, it's like kind of random. It's a uh, it lets private RV owners loan or rent out their own. Oh, um, what a bummer. It's like Airbnb. It's like an Airbnb RVs, for RVs. I was just yeah. about to say, yeah. yeah. It's like, they're just like, it's a death metal band. There's like, there's some, like the owner's like, sick, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we fucked that thing up, dude, to be honest. It was super gnarly. <laughs> As expected. I mean, but fuck. they take it to Burning Man. They're like a burner family that rents it out. So, like, we pretty much paid for their Burning Man trip, just them lending it to there us. There you go. Um, nice. And we deep cleaned it when we got it before we gave it back to them and everything when they showed me the video of it deep clean i'm like that's not the same thing because dude that <sighs> thing was we were sweating into that like, oh my god okay long story short so was it all it. the bands in that no that was just <sighs> ominous ruin okay just ominous okay nice yeah. a looseness you guys had the uh the van build y yeah dude okay so petter fucking bought a um a ram 2500 pro master Mm -hmm. Jesus. Um, some time ago, but he gutted like the entire thing. Is that like um, a sprinter? It's yeah, like a similar. sprinter. Yeah, it's just a regular. Oh, okay, yeah. um, yeah. He gutted the entire thing. He installed solar panels, so there's like outlets throughout the entire vehicle, Jesus. so you can like charge your phone and shit. And then um, he put a fridge. There's like cabinets like all along the top. He, he's like living in it. There's a right. sink. There's a fridge. There's a microwave. Um, he has a shower like hooked up in the back door, so you just fucking do the little rolly thing. And then take a shower. Um, Sick. God yeah, damn. he's. I don't. He's and it's not even done. It's like not like finished or like the wood stuff. I think he still has like a bunch of insulation that he has to install or whatever. But that is a commitment cool. to, to the tour life when your your vehicle Th that, becomes your 
tour and your place where you live and you tour in yeah that was like that's the thing it's like i want to do this so like might as well just make my home you know mobile <laughs> i guess well, dude yeah. that's kind of a cool thing actually if you think about it because then you never really get homesick you know yeah. you're, you're taking your home with you it's like yeah. The you probably get sick of home. You same. get sick of home, not you home definitely sick. Get sick of home, <laughs> well, dude. It's van life, you know. People live the van life, and they cruise he, around now and stuff. He had like yeah. a. It was almost like in the very back. He put like a. He made, he installed a bed, um, and then underneath is where we put like he had this guitar rig where all the amps and stuff were, and then um, my drums got stored in there. But he's he's like, I guess next time he's gonna get a trailer, so there's gonna be a second bed underneath. So it'll. Where this, where he had the sink and the countertop, he had like this foldable like pillow thing, so you could like lay on there and sleep, which mm -hmm. was comfortable. And then he had a bench on the other side of that, um, which was like a couch. And then like this thing came up with storage underneath. Apparently, he's gonna install the shower. I wish it would be a lot easier to to show you, but it's like the. Can you see this? Okay, so yeah. like this would be the bench um, with the pad, so we'd actually like lay and sleep there. But this part folds up, and there's storage underneath. Can you get like a storage underneath here. And then mm -hmm. he's gonna mount the shower head up here. So then, when oh, you're done shit. showering, you just like lay it back down, and then like that's like that's a your bench or whatever. So damn, yeah. With I mean, I mean, it's a pretty big van, but the space is limited. So if you want to make it like a fully functional situation, you, you gotta it, figure out how you can touch a certain things into, you know. It was well on its way. Like I would be perfectly fine living there, honestly. Damn, and that's that's something people are doing a lot nowadays. Obviously, because of. California is you know, one of the cheapest places in the world to live. And yeah, it's, totally <laughs> um, very it's literally, I think uh, San Jose just got the title of most expensive place in the United States uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's um, crazy. But their, their median house is 1.8 million now. So it's like, <laughs> it, I know it's like, that's their middle of the road house. So <laughs> like, you know, I, there's people that are, you know, I remember uh, uh, Pat Kenny, Dan Kenny's little brother, he was basically getting in his like where he was living previously was San Francisco was just like, no, you go over to go to Pacifica. Yeah. And there was just like a thousand RVs there because they're trying to figure out like what to do because there's so many people trying to live like there's that. There's RVs all over the place here, dude. Yeah. It's like the only thing you can do. I mean, if you're only if you're only it's like if you're making like poverty level in San Francisco, that's like 80 grand a year or something <laughs> like it's like it's just so crazy out there. So. Yeah, I see more and more of that, and a lot of people getting the sprinters and stuff. It was, reminds me of uh, what's his name? Eric Rutan did that with his sprinter, but he didn't live in it. But he still like bought a sprinter as like an investment, and he was like just gutted it out, like put a bunch of benches in it or sleeping places in it, and like that's kind of like the that's like the baller goal of a band, you know? Yeah. Shout out, shout out, no living witness, dude. Octopus Lounge, you know what's up, dude? That's the old school. Oh yeah, o Odious played there oh, twice, Sam. I think. Up, What's it called now? Surfrider or something? Longboards. Longboard. Yep. Yeah, it's longboard. I saw I saw little person wrestling there. It was one of the worst things I ever <laughs> paid to go see because I felt so bad, dude. You're like, what? you're like, you're like, <laughs> like, no, not smiling. <laughs> no, I wasn't doing that. I was just like, what am I? I literally like saw the first thing and I was like, I'm going to the other room to just yeah, go this to the bar. Dude. This like, is life like, now. One of the guys was literally nodding from being on pills, dude. Like, cause I knew the guy he bought the pills from and then he's <laughs> just in, he's in the ring and he's like nodding and shit. I'm like, dude, this is just exploitation shit. Get the fuck God. out of here, dude. <sighs> yeah, dude, so, uh, long boards. Yeah, no, long boards. <laughs> I know. Sick. So, I mean, what was like, uh, I mean, like, so you no know, vehicle issues, no nothing. Everything was smooth with travel. There was no uh, that. Uh, for, uh, for, yeah. for looseness, yeah, everything was fine. Did you guys have yeah. issues? Um, We were okay. We Things were feeling janky at points. Like, we would, like, put the... Uh, like towards the end i think it was like we needed to refill like the oil or something but uh no i mean like we got back no problem we never had to like stop or pull over for any vehicle related issues and that thing hauled us like i think it was between five and six thousand miles in like 17 days or 18 Shit. days or whatever that was pretty gnarly like a lot of those drives were like i mean like the average drive was around like seven or eight hours so it was a fucking lot of driving how but, brutal yeah. is it with the uh with like nowadays with the obviously when we were touring gas was a lot cheaper especially with your guarantees probably aren't going up or anything but gas is staying the same how was that like money wise with gas you're just so much more expensive right gas you're talking was to the actually like hired guns not... so <laughs> Ga Dude, okay so gas like wasn't that bad 
once we got okay. more to the more towards the Midwest. Mm-hmm. It's just like when we started coming back towards like the West was when it was getting pretty expensive. So like I think the cheapest I saw was in maybe like El Paso or maybe maybe a little bit north of there. Uh-huh. It was like three. It was three twelve. Three twelve a gallon. Oh wow! So I pulled up. I I filled up the um uh whatever the fuck that is the van. I think for like eighty bucks. Jesus. Uh, from just 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 over over empty to full. So. You should have got some yeah, like extra like gas tanks and just. So this is literally what we were talking about. I just went inside and bought like a bunch of what are those the gas canisters or whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's fucking cheap though, man. But yeah, when yeah, we yeah. started getting back into like uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and stuff it was starting to get more expensive. Yeah, and for the sure. The minute we went into California, it was like oh six dollars. Like, oh fuck, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like back double. home. Yeah, no kidding. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think we like kind of lost money uh, I, I i'm not in the finance side of the band but i think like we couldn't make our money back given how expensive gas was but uh i mean we weren't necessarily expecting to anyway it was kind of like we're just gonna do it no matter what but uh yeah fuck yeah yeah but I, I remember i filled up a couple tanks and had you know i like fronted it and then it was like 175 dollars to fill up this uh 32 gallon tank <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder what uh, gas is in like Norway right now because I remember when we were on tour and Erlen was playing in Vile, he was talking about at that time, which would be what 2006, um, yeah. 12 American dollars per liter over there. Yeah, it's... yeah, it was something ridiculous. No, it was 12, I think it was, yeah, something like that. But it was in liters, it was are probably, smaller than a gallon. It's probably, it's probably about double 8.7 what we were a gallon right now in Norway. Jesus, yeah, yeah. It was about double when he was talking about we did like the whole exchange rate thing. Oh, okay, yeah. so it dropped it's, or something. No, it's always been like I mean, back in like the last time gas was this high was like 2006, so that was probably right around that time. But yeah, mm-hmm. it was just almost like filling up a bus. I remember like one time we were in the bus and I looked at the fucking went to go take a piss or something and I looked at the fucking the amount they were putting in the bus and it was just like. It was like nine hundred dollars or something. It was like God damn, dude. I know. I was like, how the fuck do they make any money off this? But it's gotta be in it for the love of the game, you know? Mm-hmm. But uh absolutely. But yeah, I mean that's that's awesome that you guys at least went out there and nothing tragic happened, no like, you know, well, gnarly vehicle failure failures. So so there is one vehicle not accounted for between the two of us here, and that's the uh, Ethereus van. Uh, oh oh okay. yeah. And there was an incident. It sounds like down. there's one coming. Yeah. So what happened? Uh, I could tell the story. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. They went to Houston on a day off and then they had to get to San Antonio. And on their way out of Houston, they uh, busted a tire. Oh, and shit. then they put the spare on, but the spare was so old that as soon as they installed it and started to drive on it, it, it's, it was like, fucking up not only the tire but like the car itself yeah like, <laughs> like the fucking axle i don't even know the words i mean so it was no, in, one, no it was one here like could rear possibly tire. yeah exactly um but then hey dude they actually made it so it's ironic the only thing that happened is that they were supposed to play earlier that night like we were supposed to change the order of the bands they got there like still on time for the show they just didn't play early they just played at their usual fucking headlining set and it, it went okay so Oh, Kyle's in the uh, chat. He said that the oh, old tire yeah. ate through the studs. Yeah. Jesus. Brutal, old man. wheel. Yeah. True. We've done that before. Where uh, we've had like you know, and we had to put chains on on a on our trailer and stuff, and it just ripped off with the the top cover thing, whatever you call that. You know, there's like a cover over the wheel. The uh, fender. <clears throat> yeah, fender thing. It just like ripped them off because <laughs> <Like, 'cause> the <laughs> chains were hitting it, and just like they were just gone. Like it wasn't a thing anymore. They were just. <laughs> That's, yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's yeah. just plastic, but still, it's covering some shit you don't want to be exposed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that Wiring. happened in like Houston. It was like a hundred degrees in the middle of the day. They were pulled off on the side of the freeway, and uh, got to give Ethereus props. They fucking just got their shit towed, repaired, and they were back on the road in time for the show that night. So that's it really didn't say. derail us that bad, you know. So. Sounds like nobody missed any gigs, so that's a good, that's a plus. Because I mean, you hear the like the decrepit tour. Yep. And Merciful was missing a couple of shows, right? And I think and the Everybody, oh, yeah, I think, pathology, yeah. dude. Everyone Fuck, on that dude. tour. Yeah. And Seriously, even NCOs, too, NCOs, the automotive. on their first getting to that Archbire tour, I think they missed a show. Like yeah. some sort of vehicle issues. That's what it's so it's crazy, like how we're 
getting so far the lo- down the line and like you know cars and getting like the technology is like advancing but i just hear about way more breakdowns now <laughs> like it seems like yeah. it's way more common now i have no idea but but, the, i mean dude we're death metal guys we're not taking brand new vehicles out on the road it's you true. know they're the ones that that are ready to fall apart but we're like dude we got to do it yeah i mean there was those bands that you know those w- those chevy vans that everyone uses you know those generally uh, from what i see have like one to two pretty big breakdowns per tour you know like i mean even i'm sure the fords would too but um there's i always give like i never think of like the bands that had those things like white chapel like just no issues same van just like you know they're gonna they're gonna make it every time i don't maybe it's the maintenance they're doing i have no idea but they're just like we're not missing any shows and that you know they just somehow never missed a show same with like uh like Vale of Maya when we toured them too. Like they just had the same van we had, but somehow they just made it every time, you know, just, I don't know, just luck of the draw, I guess. But hmm. I like PB. <laughs> but uh, hey, Casey, you should tell us Casey B about, about who you were playing for. Cause I don't think we've really talked about that. Oh before. yeah. 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 Well, Elucinus. So, <clears throat> okay. So it's, I met up with Petter and Dan, um, and then Cameron didn't join I get, until until actually we got to Sacramento. Um, so apparently this this EP that that we were touring um, they wrote in high school, uh, so like 15 years ago. And supposedly the story goes like they they wrote it they they put out like a I guess like a shitty production version of it, um, and they just got busy with life and just didn't do anything after that. So um, Petter re-recorded everything. If I if memory serves, re-recorded everything, mixed it all himself, um, pretty much just did the whole um, album cycle, and you know put this out or whatever. Um, so all these songs are like 15 years old. So I don't know if have have you, any of you guys listened to it at all? Of the uh, the the Elucidus EP. Joel's no, heard part heard. of it. No. Joel's heard the videos. Yeah, the videos for sure. Okay, so. This is just like my as unbiased opinion as possible, but I'm not really into a lot of like um, like old school death metal stuff. I was just kind of like when I was a kid, I was kind of like my parents were like, nah, dude, you can't not listen to that. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> but apparently a lot of this stuff um, was like, I guess, I think like Gorguts inspired, um, oh, cool. maybe like some origin kind of stuff. Fuck yeah. But <clears throat> um, for me, like listening to this, it sounds like, really fucking good for high school kids to write this kind of stuff like yeah. i remember when i was in high school um writing with a few of my buddies or whatever it was just like fucking power chords and you know that that's about it you know <laughs> it's just like it's thrash like a, kind of a riff salad shit. kind of yeah but so then, then the petter like sends this to me he's like yeah we wrote this in high school I was like Are you fucking kidding me man like all right uh but apparently everyone really liked it man it was it was super sick dan's like a super cool dude petter's a super cool dude like i said cameron we met him um, when we got into California and he's fucking hella funny, like probably one of the funniest <laughs> dudes I've ever met, but, um, yeah, man, like it was sick <laughs> meeting him, hanging out with him. Um, I don't, I don't know what else to, to say. Yeah. When that, we had, but... when he had Gabe, we had Gabe on and he was just like, dude, Casey is just fucking ripping that shit. Like a two seventy or something, you know, like there's, there's a couple two seventy, two seventy five parts that, so like when I, when he sent me this stuff, I learned, the first song was breathe war that was the first song i took on and i think it was like 250 255 and i was like okay this is it's kind of outside my bpm range but you know whatever i'll deal with it and i didn't hadn't really listened to anything else on the ep like enough to um kind of get like an idea of like how fast it was just like oh this sounds cool whatever yeah. so i learned the first song um it was kind of rough but i got it down sent him a video petter was super excited about it and then start he uh he sent me or I, I started diving into the other stuff and I was, we were having issues with the, the tempo map, the mm-hmm. one that he was sending me. So I had to kind of go through and um, listen and guess and build my own. And I was like building some of the, uh, the tempos for the faster parts. And it's like, yeah, like two, I think there's actually somewhere in there where there was like a 285 part for like eight bars or something. Um, I'm just like, this is stupid. Like, I don't want to play this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, man, like it was, I've never played that fast before. I've never even touched anything over 250 before I started learning this stuff. Trip. Um, so pushing you, did that push you just to like figure it out? 
you're just like fuck it i gotta do it yeah, now. I'm just i had to <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i was like I, I grew up like you know fucking hitting as hard as i could and breaking symbols every two weeks and then it's like so, so when i once i got out of that high school thrash stuff and then transitioned into the um odious construct stuff even that and it was uh was tricky because i've never played above like two like 180 or 190 like 200 was yeah. like the max so then like going up to like 240 like instantly like I had to learn how to like sacrifice power, but still hit hard, but still like be able to like maintain the endurance and stamina to play, you know, fucking four minutes of 240. And now it's this, now it's this, yeah, um, mm-hmm. like fucking 260, 270. And it's just like, fuck man. All right. But I mean, it, it worked. It was, I, I learned the secret, I guess. I don't know if it's a secret, but I got yeah, it. Yeah. So, oh yeah. You know, it's super funny when I first saw you guys was, uh, decrepit was playing and, you know, like obviously I played with them for a long time, but it was like, I had to go check them out because obviously good friends, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw you guys on the bill and um, I, I texted all the odious guys at this time. I was like, <laughs> I was like, dude, I just met Casey from odious, dude. Like, because <laughs> I, like, like, um, I went up, I forgot, I went to your guitar player. He was like, uh, I was like, hey, what's your name? He's all, I forget what his name was at the ben? time. I think it might have been Ben, but he was ben like, Jackson. Ben. Yeah. yeah, he's all Ben from odious. I'm like, hey, I'm Joel from odious. And he's all, <laughs> Oh, I, th- I think I remember that because he's like, "Hey, Casey, look at this." I, I saw you. We were at, uh, was it at the colony? Uh, I think it was at the gaslight or gas or fuck. Uh, I forget. One blue lamp. Those. Blue lamp. Blue lamp. Blue lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I fucking remember that, dude. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Crazy. It was funny <laughs> seeing like odious and decrepit on a bill, and then there's a Casey and odious, and like I was just like, yeah. <laughs> my brain was just all like, my brain was like, a <laughs> like but... now I now I have, I just remembered. I wanted to ask you this: What does your Casey stand for? My uh, mine, Kenneth Cody. Kenneth Cody. Okay. It's pretty close. Kent Cameron's mine, dude. That's pretty close. What is yeah, it? Yeah, dude. Kent, Kent Cameron. Cameron. Kent Cameron. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I Kenneth was like, Cody we were talking. I was talking to Casey on the phone. And I was like, dude, if he comes with a Kent Cameron, bro, you're. I'm, oh, I'm no. gonna see you <laughs> fucking <laughs> fall out of your chair, dude. So Kent Cody. It's like, no, stop. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Come on. We'll take him wagers. But Kenneth me. is pretty close, dude. You know, to Kent. It is. Yeah. So Kent is your, actually could your name, Kent. It's not Kent. I could have just said Ken, and we would have been yeah, yeah, yeah. Tripped more tripped out right now. Whoa, it is. But uh, yeah. What, so then that and that's our last guest, you, his name was Casey. Yeah, but it was the C A S E Y. Yeah, but it's still. Really. So we had two Casey's in a row. Two Casey's in a row. I think we're only having Casey's now. Does it equal four since I, I was just find the all the cases? Well, I, I may have already told this on the show before, but I used to rap back in the day, and one of oh, the shit. guys that I rapped with's name is Casey Howard. <laughs> so I've I've worked with two Casey Howards in my musical career. <laughs> nice. But the, he did with what was it Casey? Why? Was it no, C A S E Y? Uh, yeah. Shout uh, out Casey Howard, Psy Four. <laughs> Still doing it today, dude. Shout out Casey Howard. Oh, <laughs> My parents used to kind of write it like that when I was a kid, too. And then I was like a little kid, and I was like, no, it's Casey. It makes sense. And then like, yeah, like my, that. my phone finally learned I'm also the voice both, text. actually. You don't know yeah. both, dude. Well, dude, voice I text love, is, it would I be love like the, Casey, yeah. out version of it, you know? My dad still like signs my Christmas cards like C-A-S-E-Y. Seven G's is in the uh, shout out seven G's, dude, and he's already getting called out for seven gallons too. Yeah. <laughs> he's already gotten two nicknames from the show, dude. Seven G's, seven gallons. I think seven G's he already came up with though. I think that was <clears throat> that was no, that was there. us. That was, was that us? He because he was like just it's uh my Twitch oh, channel seven Joel G's. with seven G's. Seven and G's. Like, uh, just gonna call you yeah, seven yeah, G's, yeah. dude. Oh yeah. So we got seven G's and oh, yeah. seven gallons, <laughs> dude. I can verify it was definitely seven gallons at least. <laughs> I know Casey cleaned the sink, by the way. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to turn it back into that. Sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to. Sorry, Joel. I don't want to like keep bringing that up. Every That's time sorry. he comes in the chat, we start telling that story. Dude, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> Talking about Anthony's Casey, not Casey B. Yeah, he named yeah. me at birth. That's right, dude. You weren't Fuck born yeah. until he came on the show, dude. All right. Um, what? What's up? Oh, Perfecter. should we do the 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 origin story? Yeah, dude, that's what, where I was going. KCB, dude. Let's uh, let's go back in time. You were already talking about high school stuff, but let's burn. Let's go back even further and get through the high school shit. But what I usually start off with, think about it. The earliest memory that you have where music became more than just background noise. You know, like something. 
a song, a voice, something caught your so, ear at a young age? So I have I have two memories, and they're both um, – okay. So, so my dad was like a huge Journey fan, right? <clears throat> um, and I was pretty much like the only – that in Boston. I didn't really like Boston, so I didn't like to listen when he was listening to that. But Journey uh, – he would listen to journey a lot. So he'd like seeing it in the car and stuff like that. So I, I feel like I had to have been like third, second or third grade. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, he would sing it and I was just kind of like listening and I would kind of start to like, now that I look back, I guess, and kind of listen and see myself at that age and how it was affecting my brain, I guess, when I was listening to it, mm -hmm. I was starting to kind of like hear the emotions and stuff. Um, audibly if that makes any sense totally like because like back then like i didn't know i was like oh this okay this is cool but like now when i since you asked i've never thought about this before but now that i'm listening back or thinking back and and hearing it and seeing myself listen to it um i think that's probably when it was like okay like i'm at such a young age i'm already kind of like subconsciously dissecting like what is happening you know right I mean? so you're saying you're catching the emotion in his in the music not right. your emotions your well you probably can remember your emotions because that uh, music always had an emotional impact on me you know throughout my whole entire life even yeah. before i even knew why you know mm -hmm. but yeah that's that's cool dude so at a young age you're already like seeing the purpose in the music that you're listening to yeah yep and then um i don't have i <clears throat> I did another podcast like five or six years ago, and I think I kind of shit on my dad and my stepmom a little bit too much more than they deserve. But they, I don't want to say that they weren't supportive, but they weren't very supportive. <laughs> like they, like they, 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 yeah, it was just like, you know, my dad was a drummer too. So I kind of picked it up and learned from him. Mm -hmm. um, so wait, also, wait, before you get into that though, so is that, was it not that much longer after third? grade or whatever that you decided you want to play drums like what made you want to actually play drums just looking up to pops or so i've i've always kind of been around drums um i don't so my my dad my dad actually has a picture of me like sitting on his lap he had like a super old rogers kit i was like a, a toddler or an infant like i couldn't stand yet you know i was just like sitting there holding the drumsticks or whatever mm -hmm. um so that's so i've literally been around the drum set like my entire life um i don't think i actually got super super into drums um or being like cognizant that i that i wanted to play until maybe like fifth or sixth grade mm -hmm. um and then yeah so that? <laughs> no uh, that's kind of what we were getting to anyways is like when you started playing drums and what influenced you to do that other than pops but it was like so during three from third grade to fifth or sixth grade were you getting more into music? Like, did you start finding songs that you, you enjoyed listening to multiple times? And... So how do I put this? I don't think I never really ventured out into the music world, like, um, on my own. It was more whatever was, um, kind of around me already, I guess. What kind of stuff so, like, did mom what... listen to? Mom listened to a lot of country and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think my my sister and her friends listen to like a lot of NSYNC and everything. So like that's kind of like regular pop stuff that kids listen to back then. Right. Um, but I, I didn't like like so I was saying before is like my parents were like super Christian. So they were very against like secular music. So even like when I was kind of getting older in like high school and stuff, like if I got caught listening to Stained, it was like, nah, you can't. You can't really? Listen to that. Yeah. They were like. They just didn't like it. So what I had to listen do? to what, like what would they do? Like what would be like a process of that? Would they like catch it and break it and then put you Yeah, on they these? would just get pissed or like, no, you can this, no, I'm not gonna have this in the house or I don't know, yeah, yeah. The distorted um, guitar was the devil. Exactly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> they, didn't, yeah. they didn't even play fucking with gain at church, you know? It was just all reverb and everything. Right. Um, but so I and I don't remember like a lot of the bands. I, I know some of the bands I listened to when I was when I got a little older was like DC Talk, Newsboys. Um, yeah, I can't, it's been, DC ever since you, I, was this in all Sacramento? Is that, have you been up there the whole time? Um, I've been in California most of my life. So I was in Bakersfield 
I was born in Bakersfield. I was in Oroville for a couple of years. Uh, moved up to Oregon for sixth and seventh grade, and then and then yeah, the rest of middle school and high school is in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, but no, DC Talk and Newsboys are like. I'm pretty sure that. Have you guys heard of those guys? DC no. Talk. I remember there was a a kid in my high school that was like. I, I never listened to him, but it was just, yeah. he was just DC talk everything. He was like yeah. he was a Christian Christian kid. He was yeah, just all DC talk, and I just stuck. I haven't literally haven't heard that since probably twenty years ago. You know, <laughs> so I, but I remember like everyone was like this. It's like his, it's like his Beatles was DC talk. You know, exactly. It's like literally what it is. That yeah, people listen to DC talk or were into him back then. It was like that was like like what style of music was it? Thing. Um, just like pop. Like okay. Rock, like, rock pop kind of stuff. Bubblegum nice. pop type deal. Yeah, it's stupid shit. But um eh, I mean, I like the Beatles era bubblegum pop. So you guys are talking Beatles, it makes me like, oh, maybe I should check them out. <laughs> I'm not I'm not religious, so like if if yeah, if you wanna if you can if you can filter that stuff out then, then go for it, man. <laughs> what if I what if I get super into it, dude? Like <laughs> more power to you, dude. With a DC That's talk like... shirt on next episode. <laughs> yeah. it, but what's the lyric what's the lyrics like? Is it gonna turn me off? Um Okay, so the one there's one that I know for sure is called Jesus Freak. Yeah. So it's like what would people do if they found out I was a Jesus freak kind of thing? Oh, yeah. okay. So that's the kind of like took an angle of like, like kind of being like a I'm, a, I'm like, don't make fun of me. I'm Christian kind of thing. Like I'm got this weird angle. Yeah. 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 Totally. No, they, they were super straightforward. There was no, no like shrouded in mystery. Like, oh yeah, we're, we might be Christian, but you'll never know. It was just yeah, like, yeah. this is, this is fucking Christian music, you know? Totally. Um, All right. uh, I'm out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so like musically though, like they had some, like their later records when, before I was, you know, later, uh, late high school and stuff, they actually had some cool music, um, musically, uh, like some of the progressions and emotions that they were able to convey through the music and stuff was pretty cool. I just, but I the mean, you're, were just cringy to me. So, I couldn't. so that's like, that's you're put, per, there's perimeters on and boundaries that, you, uh, you know, they kind of boxed you into this area and you, mm -hmm. you know, found, you know, what you could find in that little box. <laughs> You know? Until I got into high school and kind of ventured out a little bit, yeah. Right, because then you can go over to the homie's house and, exactly. they, you know, then it's free reign, which would probably yep. was yep. so much, so liberating for you to go do that, you know? <laughs> free stand, yeah. Yeah, it's when, that's when, like, Lincoln Park and Slipknot and all that shit happened. So how old are you? Uh, 35. Okay, so, yeah, we're right around the same age. Yeah. So do you think it was, like, the the, the forbidden fruit effect a little bit, too? You know, you're just, like... Uh, Yeah, for sure. It could have been, yeah. Like, finding, like, the Linkin Park in the secular music, I guess. Yeah. Which, I'm yeah. always like, dude, we, we know this now. Everybody says whatever your parents tell you not to do, you're going to go for it. So it's like... Mm -hmm. They why... should just have you listen to it, man. Well, exactly. Like, <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah. Reverse psychology. <laughs> I because I listen to metal in front of my kids. I don't push it on them, but none of them like it, you know. It's yeah, so like I had yeah. my son in the car the other day, and I was like, "You want to hear Daddy's new band?" He's like, "Oh, it's so loud," you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he didn't uh, like yeah. it. So exactly. Like, right, well. My oldest metal uh, metal skips the rule, though. I think I, I think metal skips that rule. I think because it's you know like you don't want to show your kids something because they might be rebel against it. But if it's already yeah. the most rebellious music ever. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that kind of or like you're showing them like punk rock or something like it's already that's they'll find it when through. they're ready. You know, yeah, that's my yeah. whole thing. It's like it's gonna, like Whoa. they're going to stumble across something on their own, kind of like I did. And then totally. it's it'll plant that seed. I haven't heard any like parents go like, oh, like or people go like my parents showed me Cannibal Corpse. And I was like, you know, my whole life was listening to Cannibal Corpse. And then I was like, nah, I'm going to go to fucking <laughs> DC talk. Nah, but how <laughs> sick would it be? He comes home and he's like, dude, I. I listen to uh well i mean he is into like metallica now because of stranger things you well, know metal's kind of like that in general like generationally like you know like iron maiden bands like that or black sabbath like bands like that that just kind of never die you know they just like, i just want him to come home and be like it's now that he's into metal uh, metallica like have that down the road he's like dude I found this band Slayer, and I'm like, oh shit, here we <laughs> go. Here we go. Dude. Yep. Now, now you're thing. in, dude. I, I get yeah. to, I get to play this game, and 
and start feeding you this stuff slowly but surely just a slow drip dude it's funny like once i got the dsi my brother was like i told that a million times on here he's like you're done like you're fucked <laughs> you're fucked yeah. for like decades oh, shit. are we bagging <laughs> i think he's live eating oh yeah, yeah, he's door dash. Oh, he's door dash. Looking at his fingers. Yeah, yeah. Look at his chops. <laughs> and never mind. It's false alarm. But uh, well, it was funny because I just went, you know, to the to the DSI Legion. I talked about it in the last episode, but the the DSI Legion tour is the greatest thing ever. And uh, I like told my parents before, like the day I was like, "Hey, remember, like when I was in high school and like I got those CDs in the mail, and you guys like sat me down, all worried about it." And my dad like pulled the CD and he was like satan spawned the caco demon he was like <laughs> son is everything okay you know but they they were like christian but not like hardcore about it so they kind of were just like just don't let your sister see it kind of thing you know but no yeah. one was happy about that you know it's like even, I, don't think, I don't think any parents like stokes i'm no. um, like i mean we would probably be but like you know like a kid just you know in, the, in a popular culture bringing home like the satan thing you know they're, mm -hmm. probably, they're probably not like fuck yeah good job you're doing great <laughs> you shout know, out to my parents shout out to my parents though dude because they actually just didn't give a fuck that's you know? awesome but I, turned I, out I, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they <laughs> just were like he he he's in his room just rocking out to whatever he's into he's better than him being out where i don't know where he is doing some shit that he's not supposed to do you know yeah yeah, yeah. Your parents seem really chill. Like they didn't even make you wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing sandals to church, dude. Oh, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> He's just beating it out of this room. That's so funny. <laughs> oh my god! Just never beating it out. Dude, yeah, yeah dude. That's what's up, dude. DSI, you got me. You out. got me not a drunk. You got me on that. that he cool. smacked it around some sandals. I, I come blood, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're getting into the old Lincoln Park thing, though. So you're like getting out of the the DC talk. You're getting getting a little crazy. Yeah, you get the, the Lincoln the Park getting the freedom so, at, the, at the friend's house. About yeah. like junior, senior year, I don't remember exactly which one, but my friend Mitch um, showed me uh, Slipknot self titled, and that was oh, yeah. like over game over. Yeah, game like I didn't even want to like listen to anything that was at the house anymore. Like that was like my my mission was to find ways to listen to that album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was that fucking good. <clears throat> oh yeah, and it's still good. It's still like one of my favorite albums. It's of all still time, great, I dude. I yeah. love it. It's very it's important just... to me and Joel as well, dude. For me, it was that getting album. that VHS tape that uh, that like uh, Welcome fuck. to the Neighborhood. It wasn't there, yeah. yep. yep. <laughs> I got that at Sam Goody for nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I'll just check it out. And then like they became popular, and I went back to Sam Goody, and it was thirty eight dollars. <laughs> like, yeah. They were just like, oh shit, this is popular now. Like. Put the price up, <laughs> you know. Right. And, uh, yeah, that was awesome. That was a that was a total game changer. Getting the, the blast killer, beats going, you know, getting yeah. like making the making the blast beats like normalized, and then like they did stuff that was still kind of in the, you know, the new metal format a little bit, barely, but they basically like had fast drums, you know, <laughs> like, and that was, I was like, all right, well, they made fast drums catchy now to me finally. So it's like a step by step process, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things when I heard that because I was still at my parents' house. So like when uh when it's time to go to church or whatever, I was trying to play like eyeless and surfacing and everything on the on like the main drum kit in the what's yeah. that big room called or whatever. <clears throat> like why do people get pissed at me because I'm just like banging on the drums or whatever? God, but, what yeah. is, did you uh come did you like Mudvayne's L D fifty album too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's just but, sick, yeah. dude. Still, that's, to the, I'm just comparing it. It's another album from that era that still holds up for me today. That one skipped you know? me. That yeah. one skipped me. I, I liked. I like Dig. That's about it. Like I liked, you know. And I even met. The, now that you're more pro, now you're all into prog. You should go back to that album again, dude. Well, it, I mean, compared to Slipknot, it's. I mean, it's got crazy bass, but it doesn't really have. It's still like more of a pop uh, structure than Slipknot. I'll say is, that the tech. I mean. I'll say that the drums are more technical than Slipknot. Yeah, Matt. I think Matt was more of a technical drummer than Joey was for sure. I'll fight both of you. Joey did have some <laughs> shit. Like there was some songs later on in the self-titled album where he was like, when I like go back and listen, I'm like, okay, okay, you know. Interesting. But, so you but, you'd, you'd say that the drummer of Mudvayne. I haven't really done a deep dig on it, so I'm not like. I'm not I like bet you the drummer of Mudvayne would have been a great like. They, he would have been able to do the Slipknot shit, no problem. But there's different. Yeah. There's different like languages going on not or like accents you know like his the, 
the way he the way, plays is not like how Joey Jordanson plays, but you could tell yeah. like it, it the roots are in like prog drumming, dude. What? The way Matt approached drums, the approach the drum kit compared to Joey was way way different. Whoa, he was okay. more... All right. I will check it out. I'll listen to the whole album tomorrow. Okay. Please do it. It's <laughs> fucking killer, dude. All right. That's that that was all for uh Jedi Grind, Murray. All that new metal talk was just for you, brother. Berber Ding. <laughs> Is he in there? He was. Anyway, dang. All right. So uh, the new metal uh, hits you as soon as you can uh, access yeah. it. And yeah. Then... So then after high school, um, I moved out of my parents' house, went down to Bakersfield, um, lived with my cousins for a bit, and did some warehouse work. So I was hanging out with my cousin Jeremy, um, and he was he started introducing me to shit like uh, Sixth and oh, Unexpected. Yeah and oh, shit. just like that whole realm of everything. Whoa, that's yeah. a okay. big fucking jump right there yeah <laughs> so it's just like well because it's always been interesting to me like i've always wanted i okay so i'll let me start this over i very much dislike um boring music if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. i i don't like so whenever you my girlfriend ADD. turns you on the really radio bad ADD. you have add is what you're saying not even it's just like <laughs> why do like i don't even want to like it's so like if like someone turns on the radio or something or um, even if like I scroll through that tech death sharing group or whatever, and I'll, I'll hear stuff on there on Facebook. Yeah. It's just like, fuck man, this is you guys all can't, becoming like, one thing. Yeah. It's just like, think a little yeah. harder maybe. Or, or, I don't know. It's just, it's frustrating. Cause it's, there's, I feel like there's, there's so many talented people and, um, they can play super well, but I feel like, I don't know. I don't know if it's that they're, um, they're trying to like pander to like certain audiences and like fit in a genre or mm -hmm. if they just just don't know any better but yeah i mean that's probably what they've been like brought up with and they're kind of just like all right this is what i know I'm, i could play it insanely well but like when yeah. it, to, to changing it up or bringing something actually like refreshing or new to the table they're just like right. well i'm sticking with what i know you yeah know? <laughs> like, so like when yeah. he was like so he sh anyway so like back to the the thing he's he showed me sick and everything and that so like that was like the fuck is this like right, death really... of a dead day and then like uh that was, was the that was the jam that? dude that that whole album death of a dead day is fucking yeah. sick dude i i've i've still want to cover the last song um as the earth spins around on that album but uh that's like the name? Dan, dan ford i think it's the drummer's name he's just a monster monster I dude even, i don't I mean, know what he's i don't know what he's super playing. experimental aspect to that band that, that you, it, in that if you want to put them under an umbrella like super standout for yeah the what, what would you even call that like math i would i would say they were more uh pre more of the pioneers of gent than like even mashuga was you know what i mean like not necessarily for the tone but just like the the style of the music what like gent how, is considered today yeah yeah just like you know kind of like, like noodle, noodle or more um abstract you know voicings and shit but i was gonna say his voice is definitely something oh yeah out of the ordinary too you know there's two of them there's two, two of them. oh it's two vocalists okay yeah. yeah you had the you had the spoken word guy and then you had the the dude that did all the singing and screaming a little shit. mushroom head kind of style going on Kinda, yeah yeah the poetry <laughs> the spoken word poetry shit is dope too like yeah. i remember um being like oh yeah dude these guys like to write yeah <laughs> that like that that's like an artist band like that's the band that artists listen to because like you you're like there's always no matter what what instrument you play like if you whether you sing or fucking play violin or whatever there's something you can pull from sick mm -hmm. and be inspired by it that's how fucking sick they were and then to even go uh left turn into the, like the avant-garde metal shit with unexpected so what was that first experience for you that okay so unexpected i i respect them but it's a little bit much for me. Yeah, it's a little, it's it's a little, little bit. bit much. I mean, they're sick. There's some parts that are like, is it the music sick, or the uh, vocals? Um, just I music think or... it's, it's a little bit of everything. I think. Yeah, uh, it's been a minute since I listened to, it, but I think the thing that threw me off the most was the circus jazz. <laughs> no, not even so much. That it's like from like a like a from from like a foundation perspective, like. There was nothing nothing substantial 
in the music. Like they had like they had their moments and everything where it's like, okay, I can groove to this. Yeah, that makes but it sense. was just like so everywhere. And yeah, it was, it was it kind was, of like a show off band that you showed to someone yeah. to be like, check out how fucking nuts this is. It wasn't yeah. like something that was grabbing you and like taking yeah. you in. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, it was just a, a band you just like Josh would show us to be like, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> but like, listen to them again. <laughs> yeah, I know it's like cool. You hear it, and you're like, all right, well, I'm gonna go listen to catchier stuff over here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You know? But it and is it's funny how that shit. works too, because I, I think that's like also like super true to like bands nowadays. Like you know, especially in the tech death scene, like everyone just wants to noodle hella hard and and be yeah. as fast as possible. And it's like I mean, that's you're you the best you're gonna do is like a like catch a bunch of people in in this genre. But yeah. like I feel like you know that's why like Rivers was super like deathcore and stuff in the beginning, and then they they super branched out. I think once Jared got in the band, and now they just appeal to the old and they have a bunch of new fans and shit too. Same with Fallujah, I think. I think kind of um, definitely broadened their horizons a bit. So yeah, they just brought something new. They brought yeah, something like they know. added some other elements to it, like the clean singing, a, you know, mm-hmm. saxophone, or, or like even when I heard like a clip of a home coming out, like I heard like a little quick clip when they were like going to release it, or the first single, and I was like, this is fucking sick. I don't know what it is about it. It's it's got the chunkiness to it. It's got the fast stuff. It's got like the singing stuff it's got like for, the death metal stuff for rivers like, yeah for rivers yeah yeah i was like okay this is i was like immediately excited about it i never i mean jared archaic's like one of my best friends and he'd be wearing their hats all the time and i, I would always I ask him like what are they about i've never really like dove in and then literally uh, like a month later when i asked him that question a home the clip came out and i was like this is oh, okay this is something to pay attention to you know yeah for I just, sure you know, yeah but I love the change up of like the clean, like because Jared sings, the bass player sings, mm-hmm. and they have like a, yeah, just all these different elements to kind of keep you interested, you know? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's so, why, I, that's oh, one okay. reason why I wasn't big on Unexpect was just because it was just, just too much. An acid trip. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, so you, but you're, you're getting introduced to this whole new world. Yeah. You know? So after, after Unexpect and Sick and stuff, I started, Kind of going into more. Actually, I was more into deathcore before, uh, um, like sick and shit. So like all shall perish, uh, human abstract. Mm-hmm. You know the huge, I suppose. Well, I would you wouldn't you would call human abstract deathcore? Because no, I... They, I, they were more metalcore. So so I was also like kill switch engage and not not deathcore specifically, but more of the. I was just I just remember the first human abstract just being what? shred. Yeah, what's the difference? What's the difference between deathcore and metalcore? I think metalcore is more of a so okay. So my original back when you know when I first started discovering like Kill Switch and everything is I don't I don't know the specific word for it, but they all just did shit like this. Is this an... <laughs> they did? That was literally the chord progression in every fucking song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. That that stuff. It's like Sorry, taking metal and mixing it with hardcore, and then taking death well, no metalcore to me was like always like a really deep mix of like the at the gate Swedish style with like a breakdown in it, and like it okay. was kind of like a melodic basis. The melodic it wasn't more, yeah. It wasn't more bit and like deathcore yeah, was more the, bass and like heavy. The breakdown like, side of it came from the hardcore realm. So what's an yeah. example of each Double band? Turn. Like, what's a metalcore band? That you would th- then what's a deathcore band? You would think. We're talking Kill Switch, and then we're talking Suicide oh, okay. Silence. Okay, so Kill Switch yeah. is metalcore, and Suicide Silence is deathcore. Yeah, Basically, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. I've never listened to At the Gates, but then there's also there's a lot of people, huh? I just saw him a couple days ago. Sorry, I was gushing. Didn't they? They did the live stream, I think, on Sick Drummer with that guy. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. that was just like a it was a game changer. From it was one of those albums that came out and originally wasn't that popular and then kind of all of a sudden it struck everyone it's like a a movie that came out in the theaters and then on dvd was humongous you know what i mean it was had a little breathing room and stuff and everyone's like oh shit this is like the catchiest thing we've ever heard and then it just went like black dolly black dolly when we toured with them had they had the slaughter of the soul it just said black dolly murder same look like the exact logo of at the gates and like slaughter of the soul that was like they were just basically calling out the like yeah this is the band that we got all this you know a lot of the stuff from but yeah, it's kind of got that bouncy kind of. Dun, 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 My dun, art dun, teacher dun, turned dun, me on to at the gates in high school, dude. No Jesus. Shit. Yeah. And so old think... man's child. Oh, oh shit. my god. Oh, shit. Dude. Up, dude? 
We're getting photo bombed here. Are we getting our soul slaughtered? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Look at that. We're getting attacked from all angles. It's fucking Tor recap takeover. Alex, you're, episode you're takeover. Easy. Heard you were talking shit. <laughs> no. No, I've been Alex, watching. You're, you're Which no, one? Vo no volume from Alex. We don't need to hear Alex. That's fine. <laughs> what would you guys say? Like, do? It don't matter. None of this matters. Did you guys go through an at the gates yeah. phase? Either you guys? What was it? Echo. That's funny because Alex is all muted. It's pretty funny. Oh, that, yeah, no I have the echo now. <laughs> Maybe it's Kyle. Yeah, it was probably me. One second. <laughs> Dude, we just got fucking... It's Anthony. Poor Bond. Our souls got some murdered. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, cool. Yeah, who are you people? What are we doing here? What is this? Uh, we're uh, on the uh, Carson Daly show. We're just talking about... <laughs> Maybe you should... You should wipe your face before you click on. I don't know, dude. Just <laughs> Life is hard right now, okay? I'm trying to figure it out as I go. There we go. Oh, yeah. What up, homie? Oh, you know, just chilling. We're taking over because I heard Casey Brand was on. Yeah, dude. Nice. He, doesn't, he doesn't deserve the whole spotlight here. I know. <laughs> take, take some of it away from me. Uh -uh. Yeah. Totally Casey, kidding. Brand, please stop fucking talking, dude. You talk <laughs> too much. Damn, that's the only reason why you came on here. Was that's exactly. That. <laughs> Our goal was actually just to bully you so much that you leave your own podcast. No, oh, my God. God. Oh, oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Nice. Uh, best. Holy Get shit. Going. Who else is coming on? Oh, no one. Nice. A bunch of cowards. Dude, this is the first time we had like more than cowards. five or six people. Yeah, eight. That's pretty cool. What are you talking Much about? We've had all of Trip Popsy before. No, I know. But oh, it, I was going to say I meant in a long time. With the, uh, what's yeah. it? This is about the, oh, this wow. is yeah, one, zoom. two, that three, four. Zoom. No, we're still. We need one more to get to the Cryptopsy stage. Come on. Uh, uh, we're 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 7G. Where's that? he at? Right. I'll go invite some people. I'll be right back. I think we do a max of 10 on here. I think. Maybe more. I don't know. 10 people. That's yeah. good. The Brady folks. A legit this, Brady bunch going. That's a nice spread. shit. Down, he's San Diego. Uh, nobody's repping. Like First go still. Yeah. Hey, base, base born and raised. Roots, all right. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not knocking it. I'm gonna write Aloha on the bottom of it though. Just to sure. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Anthony's new hat now. Every time I wear it, every fucking episode. Somebody, somebody buy Anthony a new hat. He can Full disclosure: my kids fucking broke my archaic oh, hat. I'd still be wearing the archaic hat. Oh, oh, dude, this is getting nuts, dude. Oh, there we go. <laughs> 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 Guernsey. This is good. Yo. This is oh, good. Oh yeah. I love this, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody posted the 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 stream link in the Maybe. chat apparently. And, uh, <laughs> we <are>. Whoops. <laughs> oh my god. Poor takeover. Right, well, what's up, guys? Let's all let's all stare at. Uh, now you Casey, got eight guys gonna listen to your story, dude. No, let's all stare at Casey Brand while <laughs> he finishes a story I'm about his uh, story. Man. Yeah. But what are we talking about? Oh, uh, so you unexpected. So uh... no, it was after that. Like how how. <laughs> Uh, at the gates, he's never heard of. Which fuck, man. So yeah, I think well, I, I think I missed the boat on at the gates because I was still under the the dad household. I missed thing. a bunch of boats, so yeah. it's all good. Yeah, yeah. He missed uh, the LD fifty boat, bro. You need mm, to jump on that shit, dude. I mean, I Berber dinged it a little bit, but Berber dinged it. What the <laughs> fuck does that mean, dude? I've never dude, heard that. It's, in my it's life. the baseline, the Berber ding, Berber oh. ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like some weird fucking like boat lingo that I did. Yeah, I call my dude. I call my barber. Bar, uh, his name's Barber, barber Dan, ding. so I call him Berber Ding. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> Perfect. That's amazing. Joel's still on uh, the RV, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you never let him. You guys forgot me. No way. Still there. He told us the story. Are you actually still in the RV, though? Yeah. No. You actually it actually looks like you're in the RV. Still. Yeah, they they gave the RV back to the guy with me still in it. So yeah. he's, he's just, just sitting in the he's sitting in a closed yeah. parking lot right now. I just live here. Off. He can't get out because of the barbed wire. Yep. Dude, yeah. So. So Rip. for all the listeners out there, we have nine people on the pod right now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it kind of feels like, you know, when you're like in a jacuzzi yeah. and then just like everybody gets in. <laughs> yeah, dude, we were just chilling. And it's like, and then, you know, you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you're like comfortable for like, you're like laughing for 30 seconds. Had a seconds. few beers. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, dude, we still got, we got so room, dude. Uh, get no, over, dude. It's like <laughs> we're touching <laughs> legs now, but it's all good. I love it. You know, love it's it. like, I'm it's just comfortable. It's a new experience for me. I just, it's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, Let everybody know for the listeners, though. Oh, the Joel's out on my lap. Yeah, sound off, dude. Who oh. are you? Why are you on our show? Yeah, who are yeah, you? Yeah, get sound off. We got list people that listen only. Let's got go from. 
Let's go from right to left, bottom. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Kyle Chapman. I play guitar, make toilet noises, and Ethereus. Nice. <laughs> nice. And then... I'm Alex Basie. I'm sure you've got enough of me on this podcast already. <laughs> is this I'm number four for you? This is number four for you this now. Exactly number four. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sounding my voice is terrible anyways, so. <laughs> <laughs> New on these Yeah. We'll just take over okay. with that. Anyways. Hi, oh, yeah. my name is Mitch. I uh, slapped the bass in Ominous Rune. Uh, stoked to be back on the podcast. Hell yeah, Uninvited. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uninvited. <laughs> That's good. Dude, we got Joel in the house. I'm actually wearing our merch because I don't have any clean laundry. So, <laughs> got that shit. Well, yeah, how can you clean your laundry if you're stuck in the RV, dude? Dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Damn. It's been a week, dude. You got to get out of there. Nah, dude, it's chill. <laughs> Infamous 7Gs, number three spot. So, we got all repeat except for KCB, right? Yeah. Shit. Yep. Fuck yeah. Sure repeat offenders. I'm here. I've been doing good with the KCB thing, dude. Casey can't pull a fast yeah, one on me like last no, episode. No, it's kind of it's kind of bumming me out a little bit. Call, I don't like KCB. I think you just go no, he's waiting for it. Like, mm. just leave it open, dude. Don't have so many restrictions. <laughs> uh, so we wanted to pause the origin story a little bit and just do a little tour recap. Yeah, takeover. dude. Let's talk more about the yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah. Dude. yeah. Who's who's going first? Well, we don't need anybody to go first. We just need. Uh, so we Who's already got we already first? got them. So we had uh, <laughs> we had the transportation situation already. Yeah. yeah. And we, did we already talk about like? Well, we we talked about Casey's couple of favorites was Cupertino and Long Beach. So what's up with Long Beach? Like we've never played Long Beach. Is it? I could talk about to that. Yeah, I set yeah. that one up. It was so easy. I just hit up my promoter friend Pietro. Shout out Pietro Butchie, uh, Cave Goblin Productions. Uh, he booked us, uh, as in The Last of Lucy, at Supply and Demand before. I just said, hey, uh, I'm going to be playing drums for Ominous Ruin. We're doing this tour. I sent him the tour uh, flyer. I just said, we need a show in SoCal. Can we do Supply and Demand? He said, let me get back to you. Next day, he's like, yeah, you got the you got the venue. I said, okay, cool. I'll double duty with Last of Lucy. He says, perfect. And that was it. And then I literally like didn't even talk to him until like the day of the show. And I'm just like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, what time is loading? And then we just like show up, and Josh from Last of Lucy just promoted the shit out of that. He printed a yes. thousand fucking flyers and gave out eight hundred flyers, <laughs> which Dude, he told so me. Fucking extra. That was amazing. And then, uh, and nice. it was just fucking great show, and a lot of friends were there. And I got actually a picture with so all of Dreamer came, and then all of Ominous Ruin, <laughs> obviously, and all of Last of Lucy. So three of my bands were all there on stage with me at the same time. Uh, so that was like a okay. proud, proud moment for myself. So. That That's was awesome, what's man. up with Long Beach. Yeah, so that was flying, a good so flying show still works. You're saying Apparently. like you go... he, he works at a dispensary, so he just gives them out at the oh, okay, dispensary. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. and uh, yeah, he he he's just a great. Josh is like a great like he's not a promoter in the like a like as a job, but like he Business. promotes and he's good at it. So yeah, do you, you should learn. Do you, do you have any merch left for sale? <laughs> for which band? All of them. Yes. Uh, yes. All of the some, bands have merch for sale. I want one shirt of each. Okay. I'll, buy them. I'll get you a merch uh, care package. I'll bring it down next week. Because I'm, I'm pretty low on like everything. Like, like serotonin? I, I think yeah. <laughs> Melanin. <laughs> I am tired. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hydrated. Melanin too. A little white. Alex, <laughs> why don't you talk about Cupertino? Because that was kind of... Hometown, you're, you're home doing. turf. Ugh. That was the best time we'd ever played Cupertino for sure. I mean, I used Damn to live a mile down the street from there. I mean, it, I think we played, that was our fourth show. Was it our third or our fourth show back at the X Bar since we came back officially? Mitch, Joel? Mm. I think fourth. It was either third or fourth. But I mean, yeah. the first one we did a CD release show there, and that one was pretty awesome. Um, we had a lot of support and sold like a grand worth of merch that night. Then the, the two in the middle were, were fine. I think we opened for Archaic and we played a different one. But then this one was by far the most insane response I think I've ever had on stage. <laughs> it was fucking insane. Nice. It was like, I mean, I would stop talking in between songs and people were still like yelling at me nonstop. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, what uh, up, dude? Yo, yo, yo. Good, dude. Full 10, dude. <laughs> oh, damn. Can you hear yeah, us better? Yeah. Very fuzzy. 
I'm out here in San Francisco selling crack because we didn't do well enough with selling metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, dude. Uh, Hard times. We're going to go see Amon Ra. Sick. Fuck yeah, man. Introduce Amen. yourself, brother. Better. Illusionist. What's up, Casey? And oh, shit. Else. What up, dude? I, What's up, dude? I have terrible eyes, dude. And there's 10 guys on the screen, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Title of your sex tape. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Alex. Here. Seven G's. Here okay. Dude, this is a record, dude. Slap the this mitch, is a total. Fucking... Hell yeah. What's up, everybody? Is this a record? This is a record. Huh? Fuck yeah, dude. Ten people. We broke yeah. Amon Ra, dude. By the way, Amon Ra, like I went to, I'll do the Psycho Fest, I guess, in front of fucking 30 people in here. Dude, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I went and saw, like, woke up and saw Amon Ra at like 11 or something. On like day what up fucking four of Psycho Fest, and I was like, I yeah, I was like no, no serotonin, just was like going like fuck, I'm down though, and uh, I watched him and I was like, holy shit, that's like a, that's a band that I need to pay more attention to. I was Not definitely tight. fucking thrown back by. I was like, damn, like the singer has his back to you the whole time. He's got this like big tattoo, of, like this like hammer thing. And like he, at the very end, he like shows his face, and then he like leaves. <laughs> but it was like <laughs> yeah, it was. I know it was pretty much all Way like the like stoner rock metal, like uh, kind of stoner metal people were just all. That was like their number one. That was by far of the whole psycho fest. And I was, I was like, even on like limited sleep and like hang like hangovers and stuff. I was like, this is fucking. I was feeling it, and I was thinking about even trying to skip out and go again but i'm like no i don't need more of that <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's a lot it's you don't need to see that like more than like once every couple of years for me it's like it's such an experience yeah, i'm like you don't need to see like yeah go ahead definitely just gonna get hammered and vibe out and then uh let it just be its like, thing yeah hey, is dan with you where's dan yeah dan is still inside living. the restaurant oh fuck mm, son of a gun with his harem we can break our own record again of getting another dude on the same <laughs> camera. There he is. That's Dan. That is the limit. <laughs> Technically 11, dude. Let's <laughs> max it out. Hell yeah. So, so technical. Oh, it's kind of loud in here. My bad. Maybe not. No, do it. Don't be a coward. <laughs> Casey's... <laughs> This is Casey's episode. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just chilling, dude. No, I don't. Do all that. Yeah, funny, <laughs> so you're listening to Mudvayne? And, uh, Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. We're slapping it. I'll back that shit for life, dude. Yep. LD50. I probably oh, said that yeah. five times already in the podcast. Well, there was a, what's it called? You remember, you remember Circuit City over in Santa Cruz? Like 7Gs, you remember that? There was like a Circuit City back in the day in Santa Cruz. Oh yeah, in the nineties. That was yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, two thousand tens. But like Get your uh, PlayStation guy, games. Yeah. This Hell guy yeah, in, dude. This guy came in in like too. a jacket, like a leather jacket, and he was a small little guy. And I was listening to the metal like Odious was being played on like a local radio station or something. Hey. I, was, I was like listening to, I was all excited and I was like listening to it. And he comes up to me, he's just all so you like the metal? What up, Dan? I was, I was working like the <laughs> audio dude. department back in the day. Oh shit, we have another What's up, dude? How's it going, man? Hey, what Dan, up, what's, up? Man. what's up? Oh, man. What do you think about LD50? A bunch of handsome men up in this group chat right here, dude. Thanks, Hell dude. Yeah. Lots of beards, dude. Yeah. Kind Lots of, of beards for beards. sure. Beards and hair. <laughs> Thank you. Dude, it had to happen. Oh, yeah. You gotta flex the, the biblical look, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Yes. DC talk, dude. What up? <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. Damn. Christian rock. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Striper. Yeah, Fuck yeah. Creed. Creed, Striping. Dude. You know, we're slapping Creed on the road. Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, your arms were definitely wide open. That's, you know, it's catchy fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, ca it's catchy music. Like, it's like you know, the whole, like, Stone Temple Pilots Pearl Jam thing was coming out, and they're just like, dude, we'll yarl way harder, dog. Like, <laughs> we'll yarl, dude. <laughs> yarl. Oh, like, I don't know. I can't even do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't know who did that, but fuck yeah. Uh, is that Kyle? Yeah, it's the one fucking like Seattleite. 
<laughs> nah, we have it. more yeah, people yeah. on the pod than viewers currently. <laughs> <laughs> we were most that of the viewers so anyway. Funny, so. <laughs> that's why. Man, that's so funny. Oh, that's great, dude. But hey, Dan awesome. and Petter, you guys have fun tonight watching Amon Ra. Fucking yeah, thanks for, sick thanks for thank popping you. in. Hell yeah, well, guys. Rock and roll. Thanks for helping us break a record, dude. You just gonna watch the video of his flash. Oh, jeez. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, totally, dude. Uh huh. Exactly. This robot yep, shit, yep. dude. That's right. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. what's happening. Fuck yeah. This is perfect shit. Alien <laughs> transmission. <laughs> yep. Oh. Jesus. Dude, you couldn't see this. AI. We're having a different. It's crazy. Kind of Jeff Huell situation going on. Shit. <laughs> That was more like digital sounding uh, though. Jeff Yule was just like a at Circuit Shitty, like uh there was, was, um, yeah. <laughs> No, there was really uh, the dude came up he's all, you're, you're into the metal and shit, and I was all fuck yeah, dude. And like he's all he's wearing a mud vein like custom leather jacket. And I'm like, oh, this guy. Like I'm like I'm all like kind of like Damn. judging him in my head. I'm like I'm like you're wearing a custom mud vein jacket. This is fucking aggressive. But then like I was That's like, hard. yeah. He's all what what band are you in? And I was like odious blah blah. And he's I was like what do you play any music? He's like yeah, I play in a band. I'm like what band? He's all mud vein. And I was like oh you're the ball bass player guy, dude. Fuck yeah. And we just like yeah. hung out it's and like, talked. Where, where's your horn? Wait, you actually? It was, it was like actually... fucking Ryan Martinet. Yeah, it was it was Ryan for sure. Yeah, so yeah. you're sitting there judging him, like with this little bitch, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then and the big and then, Ryan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got owned a little nice. bit. And I was, have you guys yeah. heard it? Have you heard of his story? Lately? I forget story. what it's called, but he's in this crazy jazz band. Oh yeah, for he, sure. He'd be slapping that bass for sure. Ryan, he rips those strings. Good. Yeah, yeah. No, he's insane. But uh, like, yeah, that was like, like every shredder in some crazy jazz band. Is that like? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Obligatory. Kind of, at least do that once. I mean, jazz is the fucking ultimate, I think, dude. Alex, over, it. over it's most tech death, jazz is way more sick to me now. What about me? What'd you say? Let's do a, let's do a crazy jazz band, dude. It's about time. Uh, yeah, I can spaz out for a while. I'm probably I think Gilbert should be involved in that, yeah. too. I don't know if Gilbert's in the no, chat, but what up, Gilbert? You need to uh, get on that, that jazz guitar shit. I want to hear a... Uh, Gilbert side project where he because I know he can play that shit so good, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah Gilbert's like insane at that shit. Yeah. Put me to shame, don't do this to me. But now that Alex <laughs> is in San Diego, I'm gonna torture him to jam with me. We're just gonna make I Alex end up being him. in bands with all the Cali Death fucking yeah. Bay shit. Oh, yeah, it's eventually gonna be... until you have to deal with it, and then you're like, oh, this is kind of too much. <laughs> Sick. You're like a drummer, <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. a drummer with no skill. Yeah. <laughs> nah. All right. Um, did you guys talk about how fucking Casey ripped it on tour every night already, or no? Yep. Kind of. Did. Well, moving he on. He did. Right. Except that one night. This podcast we just started. We're like, Casey, you're really good. All right. See you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was sick, dude. It was sick watching Illusionist play and uh, like every night just coming in and just setting the bar for the rest of us and just being savage. It was. Not only is it good music, like I became a bigger fan of the music, but like just watching these guys play every night was fucking awesome. Doesn't that suck though a little bit? Like I, I remember like on those tours, like you're like, all right, a little nervous, and then like the opening band just like murders, you're like, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, yeah. pretty much. We That's had two, exactly we had two awesome. fucking bands every night before us playing that just fucking destroyed <laughs> us, and it's like, oh cool, what the fuck are we gonna do? We'll just slop our fucking dumb asses up there, and all right, let's get to the set. <laughs> Not even. Terrible. Yeah, it too, bud. Yeah. <laughs> the sickest thing about Casey Brand is that he doesn't warm up. He just gets up there and kills it without Shut warming up. up. No warm up at all. No. Yeah. Did you do this uh, or something? Do you like shake your arms? Or... No. <laughs> no. I just vape. I, don't... <laughs> I, just, yeah, I vape, just sit there. I don't. I, I feel like dude. I used to warm dude, up, but I drink. felt like it would. It's probably oh, the bangs, bangs, to be honest. Oh, you're down. <laughs> yeah, you're down with that. He's bang. sipping those. Yeah, I got. Yeah, bangs all day. Uh, there it is. Oh, yeah. Disappointed I didn't see one in the background. They yeah. stopped doing stuff. To, I was like wearing the bangs for a while. They're like literally. I got three of them. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's why it doesn't have to warm up. <laughs> okay, that's why your tolerance goes up it's so quickly this. with bangs, dude. Like, I literally have a bang. Like when I was like into bangs a bunch, I can go right to bed. Like, 
it's like immediately. Oh, I could drink Yo. coffee and fall asleep right after. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of how it is for me now. Like, it doesn't really. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. You have to like change it up. Anything. Like, if you have a rock star, like a weak ass rock star, you're like, oh shit, what's going on? Like, freak yeah. or like a, a black <laughs> coffee or something. You're like, Jesus, it's got like a a quarter of what a bang has, like one mm. bang and like caffeine. But like, it's your body just going like, all right, dude. Like changing up the chemical structure, it's like, oh fuck, yeah. this is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all our bodies are always trying to find a homeostasis. So if you just fucking dump whatever into your stomach, your stomach's eventually gonna be like, all right, this is what we gotta work with. Let's fucking let's do what we can with it, you know? Yep. Totally. But it's it it's definitely those things fucking gave me like low level anxiety. I'm not an anxious person. But I did drink fucking bangs for a little bit instead of coffee. And it, like in the afternoon, I'd be all like kind of low level anxiety, jittery. And I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what am I doing? And then I quit, quit those things. That shit went away fucking a day later. So I'm like, all right, dude, can't fuck with those things anymore. Yeah. Like things. 300 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like yeah but it's not it's probably not even the cat because i'm a co- i've been a coffee drinker since high school oh, like hardcore so it's like it's not the caffeine it's all the other bullshit that's in there with it dude i looked up actually because i was worried for a while <laughs> so i was drinking so many bangs i was worried like what's the ld50 of caffeine <laughs> that's you know what ld50 means like <laughs> what's that means mean? like <laughs> a good mud vein down dude that yeah. means 50 percent of people that that consume it die from it that's what ld50 means it's like yeah. a drug term I know, so, dude, but it's just funny that that's well, like. I know, but you're not the one who's here. Said <laughs> <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, now Joel's a fucking doctor. He needs to explain. Yeah, the yeah LD but I looked 50. up. The, I looked up the LD50. Anthony only told Anthony, so it means like the. I'm just kidding, but like if you drink enough of caffeine, I think it's like literally. I think it's like three thousand milligrams or something like that. So oh, it's like shit, the LD50. That's... It's yeah, it's like really high. So like. They're they're pretty safe giving you three hundred. Like right. you have to really like butt chug those to get those. <laughs> to get, like have it skip your liver or something to get that. Right. You know? But um, yeah. So caffeine usually is just gonna cause anxiety if you drink a lot of it. It's not gonna like yeah. kill you. I mean, there was those four locos back in the day that were like had that certain formula that was killing people because kids were just chugging four locos because they had a bunch of alcohol in them, and they were dying because alcohol and caffeine together mm-hmm. was a bad bad time. Right. I think it was You're actually some have a kids at a, at a university in central Washington that butt chugged it and ended up dying. Whoa. Dude. Yeah. You but like butt actually butt chug? It. Yeah. Like actually fucking butt chug. Oh, yeah. You butt chug anything like the coffee enemas are real, <laughs> yeah. dude. Those are yeah, the thing. Yeah. And like uh, taking a vodka shot in your butt will get you fucked up. Yeah. yeah could actually <laughs> land you in the hospital. Like, there was uh, these really girls for a while that were tamponing the, the tampons, yeah. dipping it uh, in vodka. And putting it in there all what is weird it's like that sounds like so much like devotion to wanting to get fucked up to where you're gonna effort. stick it's like so much you alcohol can into drink. other you organs just drink in your it. body yeah. it's like, <laughs> that's wild dude. Shit. but oh, wait what's it? okay this is a question if if you get drunk through your vagina or butthole <laughs> are you gonna blow a a fucking are you gonna blow a blood alcohol? Oh. Probably not. Probably you still would, because it's still would in you? your blood. Okay, yeah. but, but it, it comes through your breath. Like it catches it through your breath, though. So if it didn't go into your gut, then it's not fuming out of your mouth. But we got you a hard yes. We got a yes in the chat. When you uh, when you're drunk, you still sweat it out of your body, so mm. it still kind of comes out of your skin. So I would imagine. Yeah. Your mouth as well. I don't know. I actually don't know yeah. the answer. Yeah, you probably would like leave like breathe your last breath. You just only one like, way to find out. Casey Brand, <laughs> butt chugging <laughs> alcohol. I don't know, Anthony. Maybe you're onto something. Dude. I can't That's believe that trash. fucking Seven G's just pulls out a seven yeah. gallon thing of water. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I didn't> see. <laughs> <laughs> my cup was empty, dude. Oh my god, <laughs> brand loyalty. <laughs> He's still <laughs> living in the RV, guys. Like, yeah, no, he, he needed that on tour. That's for goddamn tour. Oh, yeah, god. I fucking yeah. found like ten, brought, that. <laughs> ten gallons of fucking water just all throughout the RV at any time. Uh, dude, you bring that next time. Seven oh, G's. Damn. Seven G's is a big human, though. How tall are you, dude? Nine You're like six, yeah, like six, like six four. Oh, okay. Seven G. Yeah, seven. It's probably seventy <laughs> inches. Seventy-seven six inches. Six foot dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we we drank an extraordinary amount of water on that RV, but Joel yeah. drank like eighty percent of all of it. Did he you he bought like. <laughs> wait, wait! I really want to hear his height. What is your height? Seven Gs. Oh, uh, seven. No, for real. No, no. He said six. Four. I think it's like six four. 
Yeah. Like, I was thinking like six, on a good five. day, probably six five. five when five. I hung out with him, dude, I was like this the whole time. So like <laughs> how how are those fucking mollies, dude? <laughs> dude. <laughs> no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. So Molly's are got a alcoholic beverage. Oh yeah, we characters. gotta keep doing the disclaimer on that because that, everybody yeah. would usually think we're talking about drugs. Six but no. shots. Oh yeah, six shots, five or six okay, shots. We're, but we're not gonna go into it again. We already did it because I, I know. But uh, we're not taking Molly. I don't know. I'm just trying to like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a, a very <laughs> strong margarita. Molly. I mean, I've taken Molly a bunch, but if you butt chugged a Molly, you would die, <laughs> dude. Probably. Pretty much. <laughs> You would probably end up in the hospital. Dude. So, Casey, uh, Rand, you like were into like unexpect, and then it's <laughs> <laughs> a good segue. Let's know. Let's get it. Let's, yeah. get it. let's all, let's all, let's all talk. circle them and let them. You know, I thought we were talking story. more about the tour right now. It doesn't really matter what we're yeah, talking about. It, Ninety minutes. Over, that, yeah, yeah, it's over. I'll, I'll rely. I'm it. taking over. I'm gonna take do it. this. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah. Professor, take the reins. Professor's first episode back. Let him take the helm, dude. Okay. There he is. Uh, Kyle, give me the Aetherius takeover of the tour or take home <laughs> message, whatever. What's what's what was what was this tour? Did for you butt chug vodka, dude? Fuck no, yeah. I barely fucking drank on tour. Maybe like four nights, I maybe had something to drink. I don't know. Aetherius take home from this tour was uh, even in the shittiest times when you have shitty shows. If you had good tour mates, it's gonna kick ass. That's pretty much That's it. fucking yeah. huge. That is Cheers. huge. That's, Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. No, no but checking um, for me, not a drunk. No, none of that. But uh, I mean, if you want to, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to help support you. each other. Yeah, I'll I'll yeah. spot you. You know, fuck whatever you need. But <laughs> no, I mean, we we had a few nights that were duds, and you know, I think the shenanigans leading up to the tour is well documented at this point. So I don't need to really go into it too much. But we mm. made the best of it, and everyone, mm. despite shitty drives, dying in the desert heat, and you know, oh, low turnouts on a few nights, everyone still T had good spirits and fucking brought it. And that's all that really matters. Tell us about like the off days and shit. Like, did you guys make the best of all the off days? I I think so. Like the first off day was after Tacoma, <laughs> which so Aetherius, We were all at home, so I went back to my house and did some yard work and shit. So, um, the the second off day, we all went to Houston and we actually went to that uh, Sangua Sugabug and stabbing show down there. That was fucking sick as shit. Just nice. a bunch of brutal death metal. I think Undead Sangua was on that too. Sugabug? Yeah. Really? It's big, uh -huh. stupid, crazy name, but um, I think Undeath was on it, No Moss, and just a bunch of brutal death bands. I didn't realize hardcore dancing was still alive and well until I went to that mm. show. So many fist fights. Just, I think Undeath's merch guy ended up throwing a table to the side and ran out and tried to fight some dude in the pit because he kept nice. doing cartwheels into the merch. Jesus. But, That's kind of the Texas style, right? I've always heard seems that Texas like had their separate way of moshing because they the slam things big out there it's huge out there i had no idea because seattle fucking sucks we have shitty black metal and shitty death metal and that's about it yeah um, going anywhere else it's like oh wow they actually have a music scene neat yeah we yeah. always heard about texas and and how yeah. it was sick out there yeah it was super sick but yeah hung out went back to um our fill -in drummer lives in houston so we just crashed at his house Drink Shout out Aaron, dude. Yeah, Aaron seriously. is going to be the next big drummer you're he all going to hear he's, about. Aaron is very, very sick. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a good boy. Good What's old his Texas last boy. name? Hetzko. H-E-T-S-K-O. He is a uh, Keep that on your radar, guys. Yeah, plays in a band called the Zabellian Triangle, spelt with an X. Um, kind of like a symphonic death metal band. They have some clean cool. singing in there, but just super sick band, super sick dude. Love that guy. He is welcome to tour with us or just hang out with us anytime. So, and Aaron's super hungry. I actually got him another gig with another band that he'll announce shortly. And he's Sick. his schedule is open. He says, you know, hit him up for for drum gigs. So, I mean, I already like have too many that I can't do. So I'm already throwing <laughs> them to him. I'm probably gonna try to throw more to him. And he's hungry and ready for it. So shout out Aaron. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shout out Barn Chernobyl real quick. They're uh, with the Zoth call on the on the Seattle. Oh, yeah, Seattle. Zoth is a sick sack. Zoth is super Seattle sick. Yeah. Zoth is sick. Not a sick. Pound is sick. There are sick bands in Seattle. It's just the majority of it is not. Great. I think that was just because yeah. He, he, yeah. Well yeah yeah. Um, uh, in terms of days off, we should talk about Austin, Texas. Uh, ah, the, yeah. the oh, yeah. guys. Barbecue. Uh, Oh any roadside barbecues or anything like that? 
Hell yeah. We, we went to Terry Black's, which is like kind of known for being one of the best. But, well, I guess Joe Rogan blew it up to begin with. I went there like, I don't know, three years ago before the pandemic. And I was like, oh, fuck, I can't eat barbecue anywhere else anymore. It's too good. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I went in with the intention of trying to ruin everyone else's taste in barbecue. But it sounds like they're still content with California barbecue. So I'm a little disappointed. But me and Joseph and Joel, we got to go to the river barton springs river and hang out there for a while hell yeah yeah the, the rv was plugged into a campsite for a change so it actually had air conditioning nobody was dying yeah, <laughs> <So> that, <laughs> yeah. Left Did you guys swim in the river and shit yeah, yeah. <laughs> we that swam in the river we saw the bats you know actually we met up yep. with the loosenest guys right as the bats were coming out to fucking do whatever bats do in the night that was fucking <laughs> sick and then Warm. uh we rode scooters around. It's one of those places where there's just like a fucking million scooters. You just grab yeah. one, and point your phone at it. We rode around. Uh, I dropped my phone, broke it. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Threw up in a bathroom. It was great. Did you, <laughs> KCB, or did you guys hang out with KCB on the off days too? Or did you guys do your own thing? No, nah, dude. Bands? Ominous just fucking dipped after every fucking show. They're <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, pussies. where's Basie? It was like, we well, don't know. Either. It took us goddamn like twice as long yeah, to get uh, anywhere. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that RV yeah, was yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, you guys were sluggies. Well, no, but we did. We, we ended up meeting up for a little bit at uh, in Austin. We tried to all get barbecue together, but that was, uh, bro, that was you guys. You were late for that one. Don't blame the song. I don't even know. I don't even know what we were doing. Oh, because we were watching the bats on the bridge. Oh, yeah. No, worth it. I'd want to watch that, dude. It was sick. It was sick. So as soon as like, as soon as sunset hit, like all like just they come coming sunset. out of a cave or whatever. It was under, under the, like, bridge. the bridge in like downtown mm -hmm. wherever Houston. Oh yeah, know. Austin's like filled Austin? with bats. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's like it was, a, it's yeah. pretty nutty. Bat country. There's like a million bats that live under a set of bridges, and they all come out at the same time. Yep. It's super sick. And then we rode the scooters. Uh, yep. To Terry Black's, that was fun. Yeah, the lime, the lime scooters. Me yeah. and Justin went to that one chili place for some reason, for because your dad told us to go there. <laughs> yeah, I told my dad Chili's. that story. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Chili's. <laughs> so, it's called the Chili Parlor. Apparently, it's one of the last like old style Austin bars, and it was cool. It was very cool. Um, I want to shout out like a bunch of people, but. The night before Austin was uh, Fort Worth, and then I had some homies from the band Reviled come out. They're really sick Texas death metal band. Their drummer, Brennan, plays for Broda Quinn. Uh, their singer, Taylor, Thick Neck Taylor, he throws Gord in the Heart of Texas Fest. Uh, they're, I met them in Chicago at Chicago Domination, and then they like came out to a show that was under attended, I would say. And then just like we just turned it into like heavy metal parking lot and just like partied all night. And had a great night until it was time to go to sleep and it was too hot to sleep in the rv so mitch and i slept yeah. on the roof of the rv that night that was so bad for real Damn. yep we slept on the roof of the rv it was cooler outside than it was in it oh was yeah too hot Jesus. and humid in there there was more moisture in the rv than there was outside barely but sure yeah the, the trick is get too drunk to give a shit yeah Humidity yeah, is such a fucking son of a bitch, dude. Like, I would take 110 <laughs> in Sacramento because I, Casey, I lived in Sacramento for a long time, and uh, man, the 110 like dry heat versus like fucking 79 with 100 percent humidity, I would take 110 yeah. any day of the week. Like that's we like were, yeah. We were in uh, where were we at? Where the blues bar? Where was that at? Oh, uh, I was in Phoenix. 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 That was no, never again. No. <laughs> like 95 no, degrees was, with 90 percent humidity. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't. No, I dude. couldn't just stand there. It looked like I just oh, got out of the shower, dude. Yeah, it was fucking awful. awful. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst. Yeah. Is like yeah. walking out of a hotel room and you walk out and you're mm. literally like you feel that drip in your body, like under yep. your shirt. You feel like a drip right down your ass. Check. Shower yeah, is yeah, pointless. Yeah. Yep. And Fair you guys all being in the RV together, it's like pouring the water on the hot rocks in the sauna. Or whatever. <laughs> Man, yeah, you know? that's terrible. Yeah, it was yeah. a swamp in that RV for like five days. <laughs> <laughs> Swamp. I, I, I like cashed a t-shirt in like 20 minutes i like put it on 20 minutes later i just took it off like couldn't wear it anymore yeah Jesus. but uh i want to shout out brennan in particular because we had to ditch all our weed before we got to texas because that's like the responsible thing to do and then brennan comes to the show he's like do you want to smoke weed in my car and listen to the new broda quinn and i'm like fuck yeah we do so <laughs> kind of saved our asses that night and, yeah uh, oh yeah, yeah texas is hardcore on weed oh yeah 
still oh, legal? yeah when you go it's well, when you go to that there's a checkpoint between um new mexico and texas that, that's like that, the gnarly uh, one it's like the scary yeah. one i remember like we found out about it once and like bill ate like an eighth of weed to like get uh, through it well, <laughs> well the dog was like in the fucking back like smelling him he was like had a fucking eighth stuck in his throat and he was like freaking out and oh, then we're like all right never again we're not we know about this place now we're not being stupid and uh we smoked all the weed and threw it away or whatever we, before the checkpoint and uh they were just like we got they brought us in still because the dog was tripped by something and then fucking there's like a reggae band in there just lying just like no we don't have any weed dude we don't have any weed and they're just like and they just bring out like all these bags of weed in front of like you fucking lied to us well and we're sitting there and like oh, fuck shit. we're gonna go to jail if they find anything i think we oh, threw wow. everything away so they got their own mini customs type deal where you gotta well, they're fucking... looking for humans but they definitely you know drug trafficking's a thing with that too yeah. so it goes yeah. along with it so yeah it was it was like literally you pull up to a checkpoint and there's like a big wall there next to the checkpoint and then there's all of a sudden just a guy turns with a dog and just goes on your car. And I, we were like, what the fuck? And I was yelling to Bill, like, fucking eat it. What, what, eat it right now. Like, And he just ate all of it. And But, like, <laughs> never again. We're like, we're a professional band. We're not. Fuck. We know this place exists. We're not stupid. We got rid of it. We smoked it. We're, you know, just be honest with them. Just be like, yeah, we smoke weed. We got rid of it, though. We're not dumb. Like, we're not trying to transport weed federally or whatever the fuck. Right. And uh, yeah. they're like, all right, cool. And then they fucking found... The dog was still tripping, and they ripped apart our air conditioning system and found like a little tiny piece. And they were uh, like, "For real?" Yeah. And I was like, "Well, you guys." They were, at the end, they were like, "You guys were truthful with us. That's like a weird thing to be in there. Someone could have just put it in there, like, a, like one, like a a two hit of a bowl thing." And like, yeah, yeah. He was like, "You guys weren't trying to smuggle anything, so keep going." But we were just watching this reggae band just get arrested in front of us, <laughs> <laughs> like crazy, you know? Uh, I know. No. So I don't fuck around when you're. I mean. Nowadays, obviously, it's a lot more lax with the laws laxing up, but federally, it's still not chill. So, yeah, be careful. And also be careful, too, if you're touring and you're going between Michigan and you're going to Michigan to New York or something, because it will route you. I don't think it will do it anymore, hopefully, but the Garmin's used to route you through Canada. So they'd be mm -hmm. like, oh, it's faster route. Just go to the ch gnarliest checkpoint in the United States, and then like <laughs> you'll get there super quick, dude. It'll be like awesome. You'll be in jail, but it'll be super red. Like if you go this way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was you know brain drill. That's a that's a classic example. But yeah, um, yeah. there's been times where we were like, fuck, this is like the last exit until Canada. We had to like dump everything, you know. But yeah, just be that always hurts, guys. dude. Like, well, luckily I was able to give. Lead. We gave yeah, all yeah. ours away to my friend Andre from Fields of Elysium, and uh, I like gave him a like a little bong and grinder. I don't know why I brought a grinder; that was dumb, but I gave it away. And uh, I was like glad it went to someone and not just like thrown on the side of the road. And also shout out Andre because he like the day before the show he was like I can't really make it, blah blah blah. But then he's like, dude, I got work off. You guys can stop by. We could like take showers, take a nap. And just did the whole like you don't even know what it's like on the road when there's like oh we can like take a yeah. shower and a nap you know and in yeah. a sick ass house and he like just hooked us up and then was at the show fucking rocking out so shout out and they like i did my last tour with fields of elysium so it was like for them to come out i like got to see my old tour buddies again and so definitely check out fields of elysium and shout out andre and Quana who made it as well so. some sort of a rock and roll band yeah, they play. It's kind of rock and roll. It's a little more Fields? tech death, but oh yeah, feels like yeah. Oh, yeah. Fields is like progressive tech. Oh, I love it. Uh oh, don't get me in. Throwing don't say the don't say there. the p word around me. Oh, Andre <laughs> Andre is very, Andre is very sick. He's a very cool yeah. basis. Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. he's also giant. He's like taller than Joel. Tall, tall man. Yeah, yeah. dwarfs Joel. Yep. Is he like? A, is it like both of us combined? Probably. <laughs> almost pretty much he's, he's like 13 feet tall <laughs> yeah. um all right well so, i'm gonna reel, i'm gonna reel it back in because i want to actually do the casey justice thing and like give him his uh episode and stuff yeah i think we're <laughs> yes, ready to get it back over. but i love the the tour it's like a tour prank on fucking zoom dude tour pranks <laughs> 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 but I'm like it, it's about the yeah. first time it might have ever been done it's like a tour like because you know every last show of the tour like bands would do just fucking banana shit to us like we're like oh shit what's coming mm -hmm. you know it's like mm -hmm. left and right like all this shit but uh, I fucking love all you guys. That's fucking you got him. You got me. You got him. <laughs> got all of us. 
But uh, I want to get back to the Casey story and uh, stop looking at your fucking pretty faces. Fair. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, right. dude. Me too. Right. Yeah. I love you, you guys. Like <laughs> what you right. like to know? Thanks for so having me. Get your new drums. Fuck yeah, guys. Yeah, love dude. you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Later, Later, guys. What? Smoke what tobacco. Yeah, what happened? What? Smoke the hell? tobacco. Smoke tobacco. Oh, well. <laughs> Smoke tobacco. All right. Hey, we're just Smoke dude. tobacco. Um, yeah, right. no, oh, wanted, did you see that they get... said that actually more people now are officially smoking weed than tobacco, like in the U.S. or something? Oh, shit. Something like that. That's good. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's good. a whole other rebellion just, uh, thing going on, too. Like, yeah. a lot of people are getting back to Christianity because of, like, how, like, certain sides of the spectrum are bumming them out, and they're, like, becoming more Christian now. <laughs> It's like a really? measurable thing now. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like rebellious now to be Christian. It used to be like opposite. It used to be like, you know, being Christian was like, oh no, you're trying to stop our music, and now people are going like back to it now. I read a study about it. I was like, holy shit. But anyways, so uh, <laughs> I know. Interesting. 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 So, what do you guys think about the politics? I'm just kidding. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> All I know so, yeah. is when I was at DS side, I was like, man, there's so many fucking people here. It was like crazy. It was like a uh, hunt, like fucking it looked like almost a thousand people, but it probably wasn't. But it was like so many. I it was, was like, all for Satan, dude. All these people are here for Satan, dude. I like couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is so funny. <laughs> dude, I bet, like, it was like normal them, people. A tenth like of them were for Satan. They weren't nah, all there dude. for Satan. I'm not, oh, they were totally there for side. Satan. I we played next door to, to DS side and Cataclysm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what, that's where right. was that at? That was in San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio. Oh. Yeah, oh, Joseph, that actually, place, Vibes Underground. Yeah. That place was very sick. Yeah, Vibes Underground. Um, Interesting. Vibes Underground. Yeah. I wanted to sneak in to see Deicide, but I didn't. But we could it hear like them it. from the back. So it was like right behind their stage. So I could like hear Steve's drums like acoustically. Oh, it's like so sick, dude. It was awesome. pretty fucking cool. They played okay. the Legion album perfect, dude. It's like every song da, 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 and it ended just like on the dot. And we just I was there with Diego and, and uh David and we just kept looking at each other like Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, after every song like right. real shit, dude. And then it's awesome. It was just oh my dude. Totally. So sick, dude. Anyways, sorry. So yeah, back to <laughs> Casey's story. Well, basically, like high school, right? We're talking. We were in high school. <laughs> I know we've gone like one foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's a long journey tonight. <laughs> he started to blossom as a um, um, listener of metal, catching different styles. And no, he's in Bakersfield. He's in the warehouse. That's where we're. Uh, at. Yeah. Oh, um. So prior to that, I, I kind of skipped a little bit, but um, I had already gotten into deathcore, metalcore stuff. Um, then we went to Bakersfield or I moved to Bakersfield. So I got into like sixth and unexpected and, uh, where is an, uh, symphony X. I think he oh, also yeah. kind of showed me some stuff like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Michael Romeo. Is that his name? Fuck yeah. Yep. That's his yeah. name. That guy's nutty. Legend. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and then after that, yeah, it was just kind of like, just listen to regular shit, I guess. I don't even listen to metal anymore now. I just listen yeah. to them. yeah, like Vector U, which is like dubstep video game remixes. Oh, you're <laughs> one of those. One of those uh yep. I know so many people have known that like in Death Metal and stuff that have moved to dubstep after I mean, maybe they were into it before, but like they've moved to like being a DJ or something like that. Like it's still like David, our old guitar player, was all into the jungle <laughs> stuff, like super crazy technical like shit. And he was like trying to explain it to me, you know, like yeah, and still like, is. I, shout out Warbreaker. Still yeah, does. Warbreaker. I like. I still. He would like bring me in there, and I was like, I don't like. He'd put the headphones on me and like show me the DJ shit, and I was like, this is Banana Town. This is like a different take yeah. on music completely. And well, he showed I, me I another it. super technical type of EDM electronic dance music, which is jungle and drum and bass jungle. and all that kind of shit, mm -hmm. and and that rabbit hole opens up some really fucking crazy shit like the sound murderer wired for sound so that is yeah. called sound murderer and the album's called wired for sound and it's two or three 20 30 minute tracks that are just these crazy mixes of the most aggressive technical drumming over these reggae samples and other weird sounds and shit and i'm like oh dude it's been so like, obscure it, but at the same time, it like it, it makes sense with what we listen to. You know, yeah, we, yeah. we listen to a version of that just 
with live music, live instruments and a different kind of aesthetic yeah, and, a and technical crazy version. But really, if you push it through the filters, it, it, it works, you know, like so with K our, KCB what, though, I want to, I want to know, like, cause I mean, I know, uh, Anthony, you've been into hip hop for a long time, but KCB where you went from metal to EDM, like what, what made that shift? Cause I know that, I, you know, yeah, go for it. I, I don't even, I don't really listen to EDM. It was just, uh, Vector step. U is actually super, super recent. Um, I think it just came across on my recommended on YouTube or something like that. And now I'm like into like all his shit. How did it click but, with you though? How did it, how did, cause I, I've, I've been trying to get into it like for a long time and I've always liked the, and I have like, you know, fucking archaic guys like getting me, like showing me stuff all night long, but it hasn't actually clicked for me yet. And I keep telling them that and they're like, well, check this out, check this out. Like what actually clicked with you moving that style of music? Uh, I think it was just because it's like video game stuff. So he, like, he did like Donkey Kong and like Metroid and stuff. Oh, so it's just like maybe like the nostalgic aspect. Yeah. Kind of like mm -hmm. helped me kind of grip me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, But like I, I could never just like fucking dubstep on YouTube and just jam that shit out. I could. I can't do that. So you have like a so it's more of the like the eight. Do. The eight bit aspect of it. The old school video game soundtrack. It's not, yeah, it's not even like eight bit, dude. Like, is it? Is, can I? Can we link one? Yeah, I don't know. That. Okay, is it copyright? Mm -hmm. I won't, it doesn't fucking matter. Whatever. Um, like turn me. So no, he's not gonna turn you right now, dude. Come on. So like, uh, who would I link it to? Can I just link it in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a wrong, uh, wrong chat. Oh, I just put it in the regular chat. Oops. Oh, well. There you guys, all you guys are <laughs> now clicking on everybody in the chat. Like, everybody in better. the chat, go to it if you want to. Yeah, because so, you can check it out for yourself. So that, so this is like the Cooper Troopa beach from um, uh, Mario Kart 64. Mario. Oh, totally. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, and it's it's just, he like just read, read it everything and it just has like a vibe to it. I don't know. But that was one of the first ones that I listened to. I is it the nostalgia of like uh, the like video game stuff and then like mixing it with like kind of trippy technical yeah hit, like yeah yeah okay yeah it's just kind of like it's it's just it's not like um i don't know how you would say it like uh overbearing like normal dubstep is i guess yeah it's just kind of cool well that was the thing that got me too because i was trying to like you know you know with, with like metal or with, with rock or prog or anything like i was like so there's instruments and stuff but there'd be like with with uh like i don't know electronic music there would be parts where it'd be like a weird like mario noise and i would just start laughing because it, yeah <laughs> it just yeah. made me like laugh because it was like a it was a recognizable noise mm -hmm. but it was like using like a part that was like a drop like it would just like use this part and i was like and like everyone's just like serious like no everyone's all serious <laughs> face to it yeah and i'm just sitting there like i'm sitting there like <laughs> cracking up and they get all offended and stuff i'm like dude they're using the fucking the mushroom noise from Mario. Like there's no yeah. or like the coins that... or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like, to me, it's all it's fun. It's not like serious. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just for me personally. Have you guys ever gotten into old like 70s psychedelic electronic stuff like Tangerine Dream, like German oh, stuff? Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's like Mo that's Moog stuff. shit, right? I I dip my toes in Tangerine yeah. Dream, but not I don't didn't go too you know craft it. work, right? You know, yeah, like yeah, like an unknown band, but um, yeah, but like there's like this really cool atmospheric music that's like it's just some of my favorite stuff that's like come out from all that, you know, like Tangerine Dream, and then like so many other artists and stuff. And then new people now, of course, like the Stranger Things guys, like Survive, and uh, what is it, Steve Moore, I think, Steve Moore, or whatever, he uh, does that stuff, Zombie, and those bands, and like that stuff is so fucking rad. I like, like, I find myself so often just putting that on. Like like when I want to hear something, I just have this like on my I just put on like a genre and I have it all like kind of in that all that stuff mixed together, you know. But I you know what genre actually? Casey was got in me. a video game band. Oh. What was it called? <laughs> the Next Level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah nine words behind, cool. dude. It was just like we were just played it, like played drums and stuff. But but yeah. No, but you know, actually, what actually got me into like electronic music to like start because I'm just talking about like where to start with it. If you're not into it, someone gave me a low tempo, low tempo something i don't know what you call it but like a low down tempo, tempo? E down tempo and i was listening to it and i'm like this is sick like it's kind of like a pink floydy version of edm and i'm like 
this is where I needed to start. I didn't need to start with like the like I could yeah. I didn't need to start there. I need to start like you know like I did with rock and everything else. Like I needed the full journey, not just like jumping like to the fucking end the finish line. You know, because it's like showing someone spawn a possession instead of showing them like a really mellow like a ease into it kind of band. You know. I Can think I ask, a group that you would like maybe is board of, boards of Canada. I think you would be okay. into that, dude. Hell yeah. It's trippy and it's it's like more minimal. Well, I should say like the album that I listen to is more minimalistic and it's nothing crazy, but it's still like you catch you catch a vibe listening to it. I'll I'll send you uh the album that I'm down. It's I think it's called Music for the Children or something like that. But yeah, dude. Joel, you should definitely yeah send, send, that. super down i mean my brother's an ed or a electronic dj like it sends me a bunch of i don't know what's i mean i wouldn't even call it edm it's just instrumental electronic music you know yeah i don't know how to measure i don't know how to gauge any of it so it's like yeah it's all a new thing it's kind of where i'm at so like i there's this uh state azure azure hell yeah have you do you guys know who they are yeah mm-hmm. the, the guys so he, he did a tangerine dream cover oh yeah mm. Nice. Yeah, um, which was actually sick. pretty sick. Fuck yeah. um, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube actually. There's like the this vaporwave, lo-fi. Oh yeah, I like that stuff too. Kind yeah, of shit. I've heard yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, I've gotten into that. Uh, that's the kind of like I'll listen to that like just mm-hmm. like in the back of my brain or something. And then uh, there's actually a label that I like to listen to a lot called Cryo Chamber. Hmm. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. I haven't. Yeah. That's cool. It's very uh, ambient noise. Some of it has like melodies um nice it's it, that's kind of like where i go because like yeah. a, nowadays like the most of the shit i listen to is like sessions or mm-hmm. you know fucking band music that i'm trying to write or something or yeah whatever i think there's like a soothing aesthetic to electronic stuff in a different way too like sometimes i'm like my i'm like overhearing cymbals and stuff and like real mm-hmm. you know instruments or like abrasive okay. guitars and i just want to hear like you know this like nice synth it's like it just it's like different textures like for my ears you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah it's cool makes sense i mean even like noise like noise is like a fucking genre that um yeah i know i, I saw a laughing dog which i've known those guys forever but like because my I was a little kid helping them load in stuff with my brother but um they have parts where there's noise in the middle of it and they're kind of known for that and it's just fucking gnarly noise like it's mm-hmm. like it's like mind altering but like seeing it live i was like i get it like this mm-hmm. is like a trip this is an insane like it's taking you down like a a non like you're not on acid but they're trying to make you on acid you know? yeah, it's like, it's like a, the psychedelics it's, through noise yeah and i was like sitting there and i was like i get it like i totally get it but i think maybe yeah just starting live with stuff some of that stuff is like getting the feeling of it because it's well, most people in electronic music want to be live with it. You know, it's not like a, a CD they're trying to put on. It's like a, a experience they're trying to provide. You know what I mean? And that's like probably what I'm missing out on. With to throw back to like how that felt, just to uh, shout out Matt Holland's, Hollenberg again for uh, he was a previous guest and his band Cleric did the same thing, dude. They have these like weird, very trippy, trancy, noisy, like interludes that pop up throughout their set that really just puts you like in this weird zone it's almost being hypnotized dude you know like you're exactly. forced you're forced into this like mental zone where it's kind of just like you almost you're gonna float off the ground and you're gonna do whatever this noise makes you do yeah you know definitely you almost lose control of yourself because of a, a atmosphere that's made by a, a, a layer layers of different noises that yeah it's just it's trip dude and that that i can see the aesthetic and and see the reason why people would want that like constantly because a, a, anybody humans are so like into so many different things like there is a guy that loves that feeling so much that he that's like the main thing that dude wakes up gets a coffee at starbucks and puts on fucking noise <laughs> noise dude <laughs> you know to go to work and it and, like, him. and it makes him feel good while yeah. he's having his cappuccino or mocha latte whatever. i mean a lot of old black metal is, is kind of noise you know it's like a lot of just like uh recorded terribly kind Abra- of like abrasiveness 
yeah it's kind of it. it reminds me of that a little bit just kind of gives me that vibe of like oh shit i don't know what i'm what's going on but like i feel like this like your brain kind of goes like well it's this fucking limbo of like watching a band like you're kind of uncomfortable but you're watching it but you're kind of comfortable yeah you you're know, like, it's like you, you weird... enjoy the tenseness that it gives tense. you it's tense yeah you just like drive up at the starbucks drive through and it's like <laughs> <laughs> you're like extra shot i'm like ready like a yeah, moment. yeah. the darkest coffee you... <laughs> no, no it was hey, what yeah. were you playing what, what were you playing on your switch on tour casey just to uh mostly breath of the wild you were oh i yeah. knew you were I, I mean i didn't know you were going to say that but that was what i was thinking but as my answer because that's my favorite game on on switch what the fuck is me, that? me and my son are like it's, Zelda, bro. It's, oh, yeah. dude, you're oh, hitting, you're hitting so many buttons with me right now because it <laughs> like Wait. my oldest and and my wife and even my middle, like we were like a four person team in that game, dude. And it was like a, a family event. Yeah. We beat that game together, dude, but it was mainly my my oldest Trevor that fucking murders in that game. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a Breath of the Wild story, which is this week my the owner of my music school's son i teach piano a couple times and he came in with his switch this time because last time i told him if he could bring a switch i'll help him and he actually did and so we were playing breath of the wild at the end of our lesson and i taught him how you can deflect a guardian laser back at it and when i like like one try one killed it like one hit killed it and i just gave yeah. it back to him and i walked away and it was like the coolest thing i've ever done dude. <laughs> hell yeah dude you you show that, that kid man you show him what's up i like i'm like the... i'm like oh how do i play this again okay bam and then i'm just like yeah you're gonna do fine don't worry but there you, go, man. But you can deflect the flames back to a lionel too mm -hmm. and, and, and that's hell and then though. mount it hate like, lionels, a, dude. like a like a Mount it like a horse, and then you could start stabbing it in the back of its neck, dude. Yeah, I know about that, but <laughs> I've only gotten to do that once, and it was like an easy one. Now I can't do it anymore. What's What's up, most, you know, you know about the flurry rushes, dude. Have you ever seen some? Yeah, yeah. Flurry? All right, yeah. That's this is the most Twitch thing we've done the whole time we've been on. <laughs> talk about video games. Well, this this game is legit, because. But where are you? Like, yeah, where are you at in the game, Casey? Like I'm like, oh, like I, 114 I, shrines. I beat it. It's all done. Yeah, I, like I'm you... just looking for like Koroks and uh, yeah, finishing okay. the shrines or whatever. Koroks. Can you go dude, back so... after you beat it, after you beat the game? And can you go back and like collect shit and make it? Yeah, keep like... doing it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. It cool. doesn't. It doesn't save after you finish it. It saves like before. Even but even the know, main yeah, boss, whatever. Calamity oh, Ganon, gotcha. he comes back and yeah. you can go fight him as many times as you want. Yeah. It's this whole like world that you can just exist in, dude. Like it's yeah. to, it's crazy to the point where like you get to a point where you have your own house you can store your weapons there a bed means that you got a good night's sleep and you get full energy after you wake up yeah. um you gather food you hunt food you make different recipes that will work towards different things so like if you got to go into a frozen area you can cook things with like spicy peppers and shit and it'll it'll give you like a you heat are. heat like a certain amount of time you could cold be resistance. in the cold yeah cold resistance oh, but it's yep. just it's 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 a it, there's there's puzzles there's fucking bosses there's you could do so yeah. many things in that game yeah dude. i'm trying to like get everything in the inventory you can possibly get like buy all the upgraded shit from the fairies and that's right. crazy because then it's like you need five of this item and then you got to go find five of that item which could mean fighting like five bosses just to get the items you need is right the or whatever it's like so many levels connected yeah it's really and there's certain places you could blow up rocks and they'll have like <laughs> precious metals in there or like diamonds oh, yeah. and shit and that works that that goes towards your currency it did it's I'm jealous it's, it, it actually and it's like but it's not I'm like the, i mean the, just like when i was a kid i could do the whole like long like the long stay game thing like going for like okay i'm gonna go collect shit blah blah, blah. now i'm just like I need instant like Call of Duty like murder right like I need like right away. Like, I, need, like, I want to <laughs> be done in like ten minutes. Be like oh I got beat or like yeah. oh I won the thing. You know it's like yeah uh, like nowadays I just need that. That's all. I only play Call of Duty now. It's only I mean I play it like a little bit maybe like twice a day. Yeah. The only but, uh, literally the only video games I play is when I'm with with my kid. So but that's Hell yeah yeah, yeah. I that, feel that's like an art... awesome bonding tool by the way. That that actually seems like a rad thing. To you guys are 
you guys are yeah. both killing it because I want to do that with my kid for sure. So, yeah, that sounds dude. fun as fuck. He loves it more than I do, man. It's like he's like always asking me questions about Majora's Mask. He's a huge Zelda nerd, by the way. Hell yeah, Zelda. that's awesome. So Majora's Mask, uh, yeah, Ocarina of Time, all that stuff. He's just like, why is Majora's Mask so sad? I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> there are those YouTube that. videos and the lore of it that just suck you in. They're all cinematic and stuff. Like, have you watched the? Uh, the master class on the ocarina of time thing i think that's Ooh. the one yeah yeah that one's Dude. crazy it's like when they I talk like about this class on it? Uh, uh, maybe it's not master maybe it's master text i think it okay. is called something like that but it's it's really just like a like a visual essay about about zelda and the ocarina of time and oh, a master class in subtext yeah dude, okay, that video yeah. fucking i felt things dude i was like yeah oh dude, my this God. video fucking trip me out. Well, it makes you realize like game, how dude. much those characters like change like i felt like oh i am link like i thought of myself as link because i played him so much like right he was so much a part of my real life identity it was crazy joel Jesus. you'd be down bro you'd be down i have the i have a oculus i don't know <laughs> i love how i left and took a break for like five ten minutes and you guys are still talking still about Zelda. Games, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> nice that's what i was telling them it was like awesome. the most twitch thing we've ever done but yeah. uh yeah. I guess and the know, soundtrack but, to that game is sick as fuck we're, too. we're in the right spot yeah yeah, yeah the fucking oculus goji kondo oh he's the legend know. dude yeah. The goat. He's the goat. Yep. yeah he's the goat for sure but so i played a little cart i bid uh cart eight i actually got some golds on on circuits that i hadn't so i like set some new records for myself on tour which a is mario kart sick. yeah another great game dude yeah what so um is it eight yeah, eight deluxe. Yeah, okay. and they're I'm... they're putting out more like fucking DLC for it now. There's like new new levels. I haven't tried, but Trevor would get so pissed at me, dude. Like <laughs> legit upset because I I'm like I'm not holding back, dude. You want to race? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This, this is gonna be a real thing. I'm not gonna yeah. like. I'll do it for Dominic, but I'm not gonna do it for you. And it'd be like for the. Yeah, I think you do four races in a row, and you just, and Trevor would just be like, "Nah, dude, I'm done. Let's play something else." Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, "No, nah, dude, you gotta endure it, dude. You get that's how you get better." Yeah. So you said but, uh, you always you always are victorious over your son. In the oh game. yeah, dude, and I put it in his face too. <laughs> that's the way you said it. <laughs> always yeah, victorious. No, but he's victorious. Yeah, you're like, I just Zelda. him. Yeah. Way better than oh, okay. the Breath of the yeah, Wild. I I'd help him. Should. I'd help him with like puzzles and shit mostly. I mean, yeah, I'd do my right. own thing, but like when he's playing, like the only thing he needed help on was like the puzzle shit. What all the shrines that had the puzzle things where we had to figure out what to do. Yeah. Just to show how boomery I am, like when there was puzzle games back when I was a kid, my dad was like all into computers when I was a kid. So um, there was literally a game called The Eleventh Guest, and there was, or no, Eleventh Hour, and there was Seventh Guest. And Eleventh Hour took seven DVDs or CDs. To play there was seven it was like it was because there were so many puzzles and stuff it was like you know you walk through a haunted mansion walk into a puzzle and you have to like figure out this thing and like move like an, es an escape around. room before escape rooms well it's like you remember that, that game game mist you guys know about mist wow oh, that's cool. old. I, know, I know that's og yeah <laughs> oh, we're so it's like, it was like a more technical mist like mist came out and then there was like all these games yeah. where like it's like you walk around this room and like all of a sudden there's like this fucking board and you have to figure out till these ghosts are fucking with you and you got to like yeah. figure out the puzzle. And that's what I started with was like those long because you had to fucking wait back in the day. Like you mm -hmm. like there was no you had no choice. There was no like instant gratification games. It was like it's like, oh, it's so all insert DVD seven. You're like, yeah. Fucking, you're going to go through the book and be like, all right, let's put this yeah, in. Remember? That's funny yeah, because like back that. then at that age for me, I was into Doom. So I just wanted to murder. So we like oh, yeah, swapped. Yeah. You, we now backwards. i'm into the puzzle <laughs> shit now you're just wanting to murder did you like guys I started with that dude i start i'm old school dude i started with that shit i moved <laughs> yeah. on dude I'm you got over those shit, puzzles dude. dude now i'm just into murder dude if you guys yeah. play the game hexen uh -uh. computer sounds like a cool thrash was that now. old 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 school yeah it was, it was like, like Commodore 64? i played it in high school in the late 90s like on the computer is it kind of like a was doom that? i think doom was out um and those that was like the beginning of that kind of like we had this shitty computer that barely could play it but it was all gory and gnarly and it was yeah like, i was like they go wow, through the rooms cool, and like, yeah okay but hexen well, i'm was, saying that about doom. oh this looks just like oh doom, actually. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. hexen that was a good what one. marathon i won't go too deep sure someone in the chat <laughs> that's 
those. Well, would you fucking ever play Hey Taxi on Commodore 64, dog? <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, that's uh, one of the best fucking bad games. It's 89, shit. Yeah, I've yeah. never played a Star Wars game, dude. That Shout oh. out. Uh, There's the some Darrow good 89. Star Wars games. Yep. Light. Wait, what what console was that on? The Old Republic? Was that PlayStation? The Hexen? No, uh, the Metaros, Metaros 89 saying uh, Night to the Old Republic. Yeah, I don't remember. That reminds me, what different... was the game where um, it was like That's... medieval and you like did shit? And... Castlevania? No, like you, the, the, the choices you made determined like you'd like turn evil um, mm. or look like a paladin kind of oh, thing. Yeah. Like I it actually that. like, it actually like Oh, what up, Pit the Shark? Way you Fable. Yeah. Fable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that game oh, yeah. is yeah, I don't sick know that as one. fuck, dude. I love that game. It's cool. <laughs> the video <laughs> game. <laughs> game. <laughs> back, right? Oh, yeah. And the sickest <laughs> one for me was Flashback on Genesis, but you guys probably don't know about that. So, anyways, uh, what do you guys think about shoes nowadays? They're getting all weird. I need to get some. Uh, no, so, actually, Anthony, how did, this, how, did this, how did this get you to? So we talked about we kind of skipped over stuff. We're like, yeah, you know, like blah blah. Then like electronic music, and now I'm playing like 290. <laughs> like, <laughs> like death metal drums. <laughs> That's did like you, I feel like there's something we skipped a little bit. Did you have any bands before the odious construct? Uh, I had a f- so actually not really. I feel like I had my high school band that was called the Battle of Midway, um, and then. After like tons of hiatuses, there. I mean, there was a couple of people I played with, but it was never like a, a band band thing. I think Odious Construct was probably like my first legit, um, thought out, constructed like this is what we're gonna do thing, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which is kind of crazy because that was like I was like thirty. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit of a late bloomer for sure. <laughs> Better late than never, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's just, I mean, that's part of the Sacramento scene it's I've been talking about for, for like anymore. this whole fucking time of like me moving to Sacramento. I'm obviously Gabe was like my old, one of my only friends when I moved out there. And then I started going to see shows out there and I was like, OK, these bands are fucking doing pretty good. Then it's still like signed to like Artisan Era, signed to all these like the labels were just like, all right, like eating it up, you know? And I was like, oh, shit. I started like paying more attention. I'm like these bands are fucking sick. <laughs> like, yeah, coming out of that whole Sacramento scene is actually you know, like I said, a thousand times. It's probably one of the most flourishing scenes in all of death metal. Question mark. Mm. Hashtag. I th- definitely think it's one of them. Yeah. It's yeah. A hot spot. Yeah, you got flub. Yeah. Flub. You got symbolic. You got you guys. <sighs> Alter symbolic. beast. Yeah. Alter, Alter beast. beast. Yeah. Yeah. It just became like this. I mean, it was through bands playing, like getting excited and like, you know, practicing a bunch at that, Studio off whatever Watt and Folsom that shitty one. Oh, and, uh, yeah, Sacramento rehearsal, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love that place though. But um, yeah. it, like all these bands started being competitive, and it's it seemed like they all kind of like took it in and started like leveling up, you know, like <laughs> leveling <laughs> yeah. up a little bit. Like uh, Please it just seemed it. like this big competitive like uh, like sphere of bands, and I was like, huh. Right when I moved away, I was like, oh shit, this is actually getting. Like on a yeah, Tuesday nights packed at the yeah. fucking blue lamp or something. On the you know? Y. Like everybody on the you y. Tell me about that. You're just like, dude, there's all on the sick... Y. Hell yeah. The, we played with uh my band Transcend the Realm played with the Odes Construct. Oh yeah. Y. Yeah. Did you play drums? Yeah. Did I did you used to be heavy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> who, who am I thinking of? Maybe our singer? I don't know. Um no, it wasn't definitely, huge. A, definitely a big boy who was playing drums. Maybe it wasn't Transcend the Realm. No, no. I was, I mean, they played bef- with different drummers before me, but they never toured without me. So, gotcha. um, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, we played a show. I mean, there was a bunch of bands that night. It was like four or five bands. I remember uh, Imbibed by the Quasar also, I think. Maybe that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah. Because I think their drummer was kind of a. Uh, yeah. Bigger. Sick. He's kind of thick. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh... But, that was a fucking cool THCC. show. Um, it was fun, man. That you guys, I was like introduced to you guys, and I'm like, uh, yeah. So I've been a fan of the Odious Construct since then, nice. and uh, all your guys' shit is very sick. So yeah, man. How much? Uh, yeah, who 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 like writes for that band? Um, me and Wes, basically, the other guitarist, or the guitarist, I guess. So you write? Do you write guitars for that band too? 
I do. Okay. So then I do, on the oh, yeah. on the new the new album, I think I wrote like four songs. Oh, sure. Wow, sick. Like nine or ten. Yeah, so you didn't get into that. So you've been playing guitar for how long? Like when did you start playing guitar? Uh, I've been playing guitar since high school, but I don't actually. I cannot play this stuff. I just I can write it. Okay, the idea. <laughs> so there's there's a huge like now that we're like in the 2020s, you know, it's like. Yeah, I'm like that too. I write riffs for these guys, and they're like, "Fuck you." Yeah. <laughs> you <can laughs> play it. Fuck You're not the one who has to fucking play it, man. I know. Yeah. I, yeah. Like I we have to the put drums. them together. Yeah. The only yeah. time Casey's ever done anything like, like like that to me was on the last album we just recorded with the uh, All Realm. He's like, yeah, I wrote a solo, dude. And I was like, cool, man. And Kater's like, dude, you do me a big favor if you recorded the solo. And I was like, <laughs> and I just hey, I started, I started learning. I'm like, Jesus, like Jeff Loomis, like what the fuck is going? On? I'm like, I can't play. So it. insane. No, it was Casey, like a, Casey such, such can a greatly play written solo shit though that he writes, he could, and he can play that solo too. Casey's like a you know down plays himself. He's practice the drums. Like I have other things to do. <laughs> so you true. Know? And like oh, you're all Carrie's like, yeah, dude. He's like, yeah, man, you should record your solo. And I'm like, fuck, dude, I gotta record the drums. I don't have like I can't do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, Joel, no. make Joel do it, dude. <laughs> I was just saying you have the ability. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, anyways, so Casey, you were saying. <laughs> So you uh you write most humble awesome. human ever. Yeah. Um so yeah, I wrote like three or four of the new songs off the album. Um yeah, drums, guitars, like all the orchestral synth stuff. Uh yeah. just not the vocals or bass. So I don't nice. do that shit. Okay. Yeah. Um good shit. Yeah. Hopefully that will be ready to be dropped next year. Is it Artisan Era or what, what uh, label is that coming out on? Um, not sure if we're gonna do Artisan again or if we're just gonna DIY it. Just and that's just because the future of Odious Construct is kind of up in the air right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if we did drop it via Artisan Era, or if I was look, I if we did release it and we didn't want to do anything after that, I don't know if I would want to do that to Malcolm. And Mike. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know the label, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, like I, I wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't want to like, hey guys, here's this sick shit, and then sign the contract seven years, and then like six months later, be like, yeah, we're not gonna do anything. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to do that. I want to do it to a big label. I want to like, that's like get them back a little bit. Just be like, yeah, dude, we're fucking. I don't know. I probably shouldn't say this for now, but like, <laughs> just uh, like you know, like I, I forget I, the Cephalic guy told me he was like, uh, I forget what his name was, uh, the Cephalic. old bass player. No, Cephalic, oh. uh, Cephalic, oh. the oh. old bass player. He was like, we just wanted to sign to the biggest label we could and be like, we quit <laughs> like after it comes out. <laughs> just to do it? Like, just to be like, fuck you, dude. You guys have been like, I mean, Malcolm's a great guy and that's a, like a, a, a down-home like label of death metal musicians that are fucking part of your clan. You know, you can't yeah. like do it to him, but like yeah. it's like a money-grubbing label that just wants like to fucking... Or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not unique, but like another, band, <laughs> another label. Uh, Is like it unique, kind of like that though? Are they kind of like just like? Uh no. I mean, I've no, heard those... some. I've heard some stories about. Well, they've unique. changed no, hands so many times that like it's okay. you know you're you're maybe I mean I've been I've known all of them for a while, but yeah, there's a lot of bands also too. We can call it the bands a little bit. A lot of bands think they're worth all this shit and they're not making any money, and they're like, and they're like the bands are like we are owed That's... all this money. It's like, dude, you sold like six hundred record like we gave you like five grand like what are you talking about you know like yeah oh, they, they owe us all this shit because we did a album it's like we'll fucking you sell it having... yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? like make yourself like a, a commodity to them because it's like yeah. they're they're in it for they're not yeah they're making like they're making maybe like tens or twenties of dollars so like, i think i think unique? a point yeah uh, a point sure. just to be made about like genres in general in metal and labels is that a lot of other genres of metal are actually like supporting tech death. Like you go to these shows and like tech death doesn't bring out as many people as like deathcore and stuff, but because promoters put on those kinds of shows that gives them like more leverage to like book tech death bands and other bands they can like, yeah, take they want to book. Yeah. They want to. So I like yeah. in general, I'm like, I actually really respect like all these bands that are doing a lot for the scene that we like don't really acknowledge that way but it comes to labels as well like you look at who's actually putting in the work for a label it's probably not their most like tech death band you know 
So that gives yeah. them the chance to like sign us and do shit with us. So mm. yeah, totally. No, I mean it's it's a love of the music is why the label's doing it for it's a tech death band. You know, it's not like oh I'm in it for the money. <laughs> like no. there's not. <laughs> I mean, some tech that art like first. the faceless, like obviously it's possible to do really well. Well, so. yeah, that was like a crossover, yeah, kind of anomaly. But it's like so on... rare, you know, yeah, totally. yeah. No, that that makes sense. You know, that was like a. I'm just saying, it's the... not like inherent to the genre that it can't do that. I'm just saying, like the circumstances that allow it are super rare. So, totally. Do you think yeah. uh, animosity was like that for black market activities? Like that was the big prodigy band for that label at the time. Was that Naveen in that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that that like that was like the front runner for that label for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't remember who was on that besides Animosity. <laughs> to be honest, there was there was a few there was a few, but I'm saying like yeah, like yeah, that Animosity was their, one that was was their like prize a, horse. It's like a subsidiary of a bit major label. They're like, we're starting the subsidiary. We're gonna take this yeah the the prize horse and be like, this is the band we're gonna thrust forward with and then be like oh animosity's on this okay we'll sign a b and c now because mm -hmm. animosity's on it you know what i mean mm -hmm. but uh it is not like i mean nowadays i look at record labels as like a chance to get your music to be heard and then you have to go out and hit the road if you want to make money if money's like important to you you have to tour like it's not yeah. going to be like we're going to make it on you're not going to make money place. off your royalties and shit <laughs> yeah yeah it's just going to be like here's here's your tools here's your little blast now go out and play you know, yep. or don't make any money, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. But, well, if you want to make money, you should play electronic music actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or reggae or something. Yeah. 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 Royalties from like playlists. That's like how a lot of artists make money now. They get enough streams by being on the playlists that everyone well, listens to like normies. I have friends that have like songs and you know like soundtracks and all kinds of things in LA and stuff. And oh yeah. All kinds of crazy little like like my friend had his music on the 16 and pregnant or whatever weird shit on <laughs> really? some show on MTVS. And then also, oh, yeah. uh, which was a, a, one cool one though, was that it was a Whitney Houston countdown or something. And what? it was like, his music was like in between the songs or something like that. Well, the best is son Aurelius was on. How do you even get how do you... housewives of Atlanta? <laughs> How do you there's, do that? There's sites you, online. Yeah. So what he said, I, don't, I can't remember what like the whole process, but in, in in a nutshell, there are sites online where you can like upload your music and like people can buy it and and like oh yeah. like um licensing For, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And he gets like, dude, he gets royalty checks, like actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, I yeah. wanted to. There was one site that I wanted to. I forget what it's called. I have to look it up. But they like. I looked up four of them. And none of them were accepting new, new mm. artists or anything. Because like mm. I would try, I was trying to get into like the kind of like ambient piano kind of shit mm. that people like use for podcasts. I'm like true crime podcasts. Like you'll hear that kind of stuff in the background. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. cool. mm -hmm. but, totally. Um, like the ominous. Yeah, just like kind of that shit. But yeah, no one. I don't know how. To there was a. Uh, there was maybe a, you can uh, just do the background ours, dude. I'd be down. <laughs> Just dude how hella, how rich is the person who, how rich is the person who wrote the x-files theme dude it's probably got like and, uh, dude, 1. It, and that's the and reason why is hope i would hope so well i just learned today that well i don't know if it's true but that you got mail guy with that that dude didn't get any money from that i'd be so mad Hey, what what guy? Is Are you talking about the 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 AOL the voice guy? of the you got mail? That oh, guy yeah, he signed a contract. He's like, do you want to be the That's voice? No, dude. Right. I think he like I I and this is just me being like I heard. So funny. But I, I think his wife, <laughs> his, his wife. <laughs> I know it's so <laughs> random because I heard this today. <laughs> he worked for AOL. Honestly, was, like, how much does he deserve though? Like, he just yeah, did yeah, that yeah. once. I know. I know. Second <laughs> of work. <laughs> he he just was like twenty three grand. <laughs> uh, that's like a solid i mean we all get it now like but, but i mean there's saying, bands... my, my thing was to bring up that they're cutthroat like they'll well yeah, it's in the contract they're like do you want it that's like what with casey this the, the dude he can totally capitalize on that contract. himself what if we can just nab it before a contract i mean son of aurelius like i said was on real housewives of atlanta and they probably got like nine bucks <laughs> like, wouldn't you wouldn't you would, got mail text be four words though yeah you got mail yeah sorry, you sorry. didn't even he didn't say now. What what the fuck is son of Aurelius doing on that? Or is it, or is it like, you got so, Oh no, I'm wrong. If not, they licensed it. They got a license from, from under the Western Sun or the first one. No, from the first album. 
So what was it, it like was, a fight scene between rich bitches? But also, and... Yeah, yeah, it was a fight scene. Yeah, I'll send it to you. It's fucking hilarious. One of the funniest fucking clips I've ever seen. Like, uh, Carrie showed it to me, and I was like, what? I was crying. It's like girls are punching each other, and it's like Tom Brady song in the background. <laughs> it's fucking like I mean they got. I mean they'll probably you know they they give you hype like oh dude it'll put you on the map. That was the good like, fight you know. hookup right there, right? Wasn't good fight who who did that record label? Wasn't guy. That was that's black market. No, no, that was good fight. Was uh, uh Carl Severson? That's uh Nora, yeah, from Nora. Okay, yeah, but that was who did the son of Aurelius debut? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the most weeds episode ever. Hey, fuck it, dude. <laughs> if KCB is not uh, down, Wait, then we're down, dude. What's up with the ritual aura? Yeah, yeah, Jesus. yeah. That um, that group's sick, dude. So sick. So we signed to a label. I'm not gonna say who, and then that's gonna come out next year, at some point. But the album's done. Uh, we're just gonna work on content for the next seven, eight months or something. <clears throat> what is yeah. that band? Are they? You guys are intercontinental or whatever, transcontinental? Are they uh, from like yeah, Australia so Le- or something? Yeah, Levi is the main guy um he's from perth i think mm, okay um and then we have bassist uh simon but it's spelled like s-z-y-m-o-n or something like that uh, i think he's like from like switzerland or some shit like some weird come weird country over there and then mm-hmm. we have ryan cho he's here in the states i think he's in tennessee he plays uh violin and stuff and then um Diaro, I forget his last name is he's uh, in Plague Bringer. They're from Canada. Hmm. I don't know if you guys have heard of Plague Bringer, but he is a monster vocalist, like disgusting. Yeah. Scary. scary, scary uh, so scary, he's scary. been there since the beginning? No. They I think they've actually oh, okay. had a few vocalists. Um so this will be yeah. Diaro's first album. Okay. And okay. then cuz they've had then, previous disgusting vocals too. The It's very very more gutturally kind of stuff. Okay. Um, I think DR was probably the easiest, easily the most versatile vocalist that they've had so far. I guess we've had some had so far, but um, and then uh, what band is he in? The T- Tomaron? Yeah, Tom- yeah, yeah. Tomaron or whatever. Yeah. I know who you're talking um, about. Um, and I'll look up. Anyways, so yeah. So how uh, so how'd you hook up with these guys? Um, Levi actually hit me up to uh, do drums for Velothi, um, which was their last album. But I think it was more of like a hey, like help me write it so it doesn't sound so. Um programmed i guess Mm -hmm. which i think in the end kind of it still kind of sounded a little programmed but yeah and then after the after we released that apparently it did really well um i didn't really look at any like the analytics or anything like that but he asked me to join um be the full-time drummer so this is the first album that'll have real drums on it okay yeah so pretty excited about this one this one so all their all of their uh all of their stuff has been video game oriented except for i'm having so many brain parts right now um not this velothi but the one before that had like mm-hmm. the jar with the, the monster coming out yeah um that was like different japanese uh folklore stories i think hmm. oh, yeah that makes um, sense i know about their interests so yeah when it wasn't one of their guys living in japan for a while hey there um yes and i don't remember his name (laughs) there i saw a cover of blackwater park too oh yeah they did they did the special the blackwater park special edition thing um or i don't even know if that was a special edition thing you're talking about brandon yes thank you jesus christ 
Um, yeah, the Black Bar Blackwater Park Ritual Aura, Blackwater Park. I don't. I think that was just a cover thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wasn't part of that one though. It's, so, uh, oh, I guess I guess this was a this was on Taylor. Maybe one of the albums huh. Taylor. Taylor anniversary Redux album. Re yeah, yeah, cool. I didn't know that. I'm trying to remember which album which album I listened to. So there's uh there's the very tech deathy one. Um, Lenia one Kia and, or whatever. Yeah, Lenia Kia, Lenia Kia, Lenia Kia. Uh, so that's the very tech death, like the tappy, almost kind of rings of Saturn esque. And then Ritual or Taver. Um, that album is very progressive, um, more melodic. And then Velothi is. Velothi is the one that I was listening to. Yeah. So Velothi is uh, is uh, Elden Ring. Not Elden Ring, I'm sorry. Um, Elder Scrolls. Oh, okay. Um, kind of. Uh, concept album and then this I'm just going to say it because I don't think there's that many people listening anyways but um, this next album is going to be um, World of Warcraft uh, oh, okay Wrath of the Lich King stuff sick yeah that's pretty exciting so when you said it's all video game it, it's influenced by different video games yeah like concept concept wise yeah uh -huh. that's pretty cool hey. yeah Levi is very uh very smart with that kind of stuff he's actually like writes books and shit and um does like uh all the music like i, I think it's maybe like he's gonna try and turn it into audiobooks um and he's like writing the music and stuff for the audiobooks so it's like like an audio experience without pictures and shit right right but um yeah he's he's a he's very very smart guy what would you I, call that because i i have a um I have an album from Alan Moore, who was a dude who wrote a bunch of uh, comic books for DC. Like he did The Watchmen, he did S Swamp Thing, he did a bunch of other, because uh, obviously all those comic books aren't written by the same guy. So at one point he was the writer for certain comic books in DC, but The Watchmen is like the main thing. But he collaborated with uh, these two dudes that I know from like the experimental hip hop underground and they did the score to him reading his story and it was like it i it's not movie because there isn't visuals but it right. is this like somewhat it's i mean not even cinematic i'm trying to find the words to be like to ex explain what it would be like to have that similar experience of watching a movie watching a movie blind exactly <laughs> i don't know, it, know what it, it would really be, but... is but it actually it works like yeah. to hear this man read his words mm -hmm. to uh um intricately uh created score over to to work with the emotions and the things mm -hmm. that are happening like i i i enjoy that experience almost just as much as watching a movie yeah yeah, he's he's selling me some stuff too, and it's just like, damn, dude, like, I don't, I wouldn't even know where to begin. First of all, like the the writing, like, like him writing the words and like as articulate as he does, it just kind of blows my mind. Like, I I feel like I have a shit vocabulary, but when he's like writing shit on paper, it's just like, fuck, dude, like, it's like. Well, when you when you're reading a book, it it it's up to you and your imagination to bring the pictures to life, you right. know, inside your head. So, right. it almost it makes it easier for us to paint the picture inside our head when we're listening to it versus reading it. Plus, you have a score to it. So, it, mm -hmm. the only missing element is the visuals and then the visuals are what you end up conjuring up in your own brain, yep. you know? Because of the words and the music and shit. And they may be more vivid and 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 detailed because you have this this thing that's propping you up, a guy who is is um delivering it to you in a way that not, not only since he's the the author of it he knows exactly how he wants things to be delivered yeah 
but you have the 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 score too so it's like you can you're putting a movie into your brain <laughs> with no tv yep. you you're, you know that's very and, sick <clears throat> and the movie may be different each time because you can't conjure up the same exact visuals that you're 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 conjuring in your head at that moment mm -hmm. so it becomes this experience that you is different every time you listen to it mm -hmm. smoke weed <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah monologue um i was gonna damn dude i just know big things are coming soon and it's that time of the episode where i'm gonna allude to them that's all i'm gonna say though huge okay. things coming so soon that's what's up dude yeah. yeah put this guy on the fucking map already oh me is that what you're talking about me KCB. yeah oh shit yeah in time in time i'll be able to spill beans hell yeah that's good dude that's it's fun to have those little secrets you know yeah, but I want to tell everyone. You, I know. Earned, well, that, you, I'm so fucking excited about well, it. Well, Casey, like, I mean, like, you've earned everything you've, you're getting right now because I've literally heard, like, all the posts that are about you are just so positive and, like, that's fucking rad, blah, blah, blah. He's, you know, like, great drummer, like, easy to tour with, all the things. And, like, yeah. So, I, I, you know, I might have an idea what's going on, but you deserve all of it, is all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. So man. keep fucking listen to EDM and then jump into 290. On <laughs> <Dolby>. <laughs> <laughs> will, no, man, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. No, I've heard nothing but good things, man. I mean, we've, we've maybe shook hands once in Sacramento one time, but like mm -hmm. everyone, like if Gabe's vouching for you, Gabe, I'm still trying to find someone to like talk shit about him. Like I want to find someone to be like, fuck that guy. Piece of <laughs> shit. Like, that's like my goal in life. Cause, uh, I'll talk to my he's... girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, I mean, a, a male, I'm sorry, male, but, uh, <laughs> But no, um, no, he he puts you right up in the in the same class, and and man, fuck the shit I've heard today, just doing like the research we do before podcasts and stuff, it it backs itself up. Gabe's like you got it. You live with Gabe right now, right? No, it's when it's roommates. It's just the uh, the rehearsal space that we. Oh, share. he said my roommate. What a fucking liar. Yeah. Okay, there's one <laughs> trick. All right, but uh, no, <laughs> no, man, it's it's awesome to see you come out of that scene that I was like a little part of for a little while, and and see it like come up to be something cool with like you know all the bands coming out of there and it's and i know uh like i mean gabe's in like every band now so like yeah he's in cannibal corpse now i heard <laughs> he's like in suffocation and Wait, at the same time real? he he does like multiple tours at once like he's like a hologram <laughs> that like, <does> like <laughs> uh, <laughs> omnipresent yeah yeah he's got this new technology no one's found out about yet but uh he was no man he he was at the sax show and and uh, Cafe Colonial, the venue. You can like go right up to the side of the mm -hmm. stage at any time and watch the drummer. And like Gabe came up to me during the set, and I was just like, "Fuck, no, Gabe's <laughs> watching now." I have to, like, because I was like so beat that night, but I'm like, "Fuck, I guess I have to play good or whatever." And uh, Gabe but he was super. Sound, the sound actually wasn't that bad either. So yeah, and uh, it was super cool. And I got like, to ask him all about the fucking decrepit tour and all that shit, and just hang out. It was rad. He's the number one, like kind of like you know like well-known uh drummer that i would or something i would love to train wreck in front of him only if that if i had a choice <laughs> like he would be like oh i get it man it's all good you know he, he's like the nicest guy ever so i'm like yeah i don't want to be like the you know the, the fucking most elitist motherfuckers like on like on the side of the stage That's actually i did have a cymbal stand fall over while in between songs and i just looked over at him like fucking this Bro. is fine or whatever and, <laughs> yeah yeah and that was no, he's, he's we had adorable. a moment he, we he shared just, a moment. He just pointed and laughed at you. He's all, <laughs> Damn. He's you all never me, fucked up ever. Joel, you gave me a stoner idea when you said the uh, hologram thing. Like, what if... <laughs> oh, uh, God. You know how the band <laughs> that is all robots, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they so, have a hologram Tupac. So what... I know, but I'm saying, what if you set up like 30 robots throughout the United States so uh, for each member of your band and then... You play from your rehearsal studio, and you just did one sh like you did thirty shows in one night, dude. How? Sick I mean, from that what be? I'm seeing, from what I'm seeing, like with the what's coming along with the the what do you call it? It's not VR, but the AR shit. Like they're it's gonna. I mean, maybe when we're old men, that's it's gonna be a thing where you could all be in the same place at the same time. You're all like the it's like reading all your body movements, and you're like all in the same place at the same I time, know, but dude. you're not. It's gonna be like for how far it's coming so quickly 
Um, you wear a suit that, like, if you hug somebody, yeah. you could feel the hug. Yeah. You know? They're already working on gloves that do it. That, like, True. you can, like, hold a ball and you feel the ball, you know? Yeah. That's what I do. That's what I do in VR is I hold balls. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, uh, no, they're, like, making it so, like, it, it gives pressure so you feel like an object. Like, and right. that changes on the object in your gloves. But, like, it's going to be... It's when we're like, yeah, when we're old people, dude, we're gonna be seeing some crazy shit, dude. No, it's gonna be fucking insane, dude. I'm excited. Anyways, now that we lost all the, I'm viewers, excited about it too, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to get old, but I'm excited to see what the fuck is going on. Maybe right. it'll keep us alive. We'll just keep in the suit. We'll be like, we'll be like dead in the suit. Like, well, I just think of like, like <laughs> I think of like showing my grandpa how to use an iPhone. It's like, what is my Nightmare. version of that? What is yeah, my yeah. version of that? When my grandkids yeah. come up with their crazy shit. How, what am I gonna have to learn at yep. eighty? You know? I can't even think of what it would be. <laughs> <At 80. Yep>. Yeah, <laughs> it's like clipping your toenails in an AR suit. You know, it's gonna be like something crazy coming like out that. Like faster, and faster and faster. I know, I know. It's getting out there. Nutty. But fuck yeah, Casey! Thank it's you for exciting, fucking coming dude. and hanging out and fucking. Yeah, Thanks for asking me. And uh, having the uh, the bombardment of uh, like seventy two people that jumped in, That's but. Fun. Uh, Oh, uh, actually, it was fucking rad. It's like a tour Poor prank. Pranks. It was, it was like a, fun, yeah. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious, actually. They were a little <laughs> too mild mannered, honestly. I thought they'd be a little more rowdy. Yeah, but, you know, getting yeah. called out. Once they're going to start popping up again in the bottom, like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, we've been waiting. Macy was kind of a little uh, mild. Kyle oh, so said, Basie. Kyle Basie said, beat up everyone. Kyle yeah. said his goal was to bully you so much that you left your own podcast. <laughs> He but said he, one thing and then just didn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> he he didn't he didn't fucking make meet his own goal whatsoever at he, all. He, he thought the do you ever shut up thing was gonna that was it. Then, that so he yeah. came on with that, it was weak and he didn't follow up and, <laughs> it, oh, was weak. Yeah. it was weak. Damn. <laughs> Kyle. You guys are freshly off tour, so bombs could be dropped because it's like yeah. it's just a bomb right. dropping situation. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. But that shit was also, so fun, dude. Go back well, to I can't Aaron. wait to I I, I can't Aaron wait to let's go. Oh, go sorry. Go ahead, sorry. Aaron Hetzko, just to make sure that he's his name gets out there. He made me question my sexual orientation every night. Damn, <laughs> is that hot? He's very sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It? It was... Chris, Chris D says he could fall. He falls in love with men, but he dates women. Yes. <laughs> Meaning, like you fall, you you don't you can't have a sexual relationship with men. But I've I've definitely fallen in love with my friend. These guys, right? I, yeah, yeah. I'm in love with these guys right here. I'm That's a loose term. It's a loose term. <laughs> but I mean, there's like, yeah. I'll never kiss you. Right? I'll never kiss you. But I'll I... kiss you. In case you're about, <laughs> ready, bitch. You're about ready to dip out real quick. It's like, no. <laughs> uh, Casey's, like, Casey's like, dude, I'll fucking. I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> like, uh... no, it's a. Uh... Yeah. Anyways, no, I love my friends. I love my, you know, it's like your fucking family, you know, it's the same yeah, thing. Right that's on. family love. You know, it's yeah. different than like, well, like fucking love, <laughs> intercourse love. But, uh, yeah, love, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable. I just Speaking made Joel of... by saying that falling in love with a man, he's like, oh, dude, where are we going? Dude, I wish. Yeah. Yeah. Wish... You keep, yeah, that's what you keep, hi you oh, keep shit. hiding. No, I literally hit my enter button when I went to my mouse right there. But I wish, yeah. I wish men were cute, dude. That'd be sick. <laughs> anyways <laughs> have you fucking read okay. your bros are hot i don't know anyways <laughs> that's like the fucking ultimate thing that could happen but uh anyways so uh now that i've that's what made this casey like. make that face. both casey's i'm just kidding um yeah thanks for coming on oh yeah again. Thank you. yeah dude this is cool appreciate it another fun yeah. fucking podcast dude we're creeping up on 100 guys this six episodes away <sighs> dude it's getting there. Trips. If you guys are want me on again, man, just hit me up. I'm down. Oh, definitely, yeah. dude. Fuck yeah. Totally, dude. Definitely. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to bed because I gotta work at four. So Ooh, oh, shit. Yeah, shit, yeah. Let's get dude. rid of this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> are we are we ready? Ready? We gotta get out of here. We gotta Who's raiding, out? dude. Are we gotta we gotta raid somebody. We have right? six oh. people. We have know. six people. I'm gonna raid Joel G. He's got two. <laughs> oh yeah, let's raid Joel. I want to go see him. Yeah, there we go. But anyways, uh well, Joel seven G's is on. Let's do it. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. He's on. Good fuck. There's too many dude. fucking things to click, dude. We still not know how to do it. Well, dude, have you navigated Twitch? Like, believe if, me. If like, we started your Facebook password is nothing. Because we're starting right when we say it. It's that's it. No, I, I can't. About it it won't let me. I'm already it's, lost. 
My account is lost in the in the nethers. No, my is he actually money. still in the RV though? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he's no, living no, like no. he is, dude. He's, he looks uh, like he's still in the RV. RV. That's just his new bedroom, dude. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious, though. Uh, fuck yeah! <laughs> it looks all so right. good. Uh, real quick, are we uh, waiting for Joel to raid? Or oh, wait, no, no, it's all I good. Want, I want to make sure uh, you're, it's all good. Okay, so battleforgecoffee.com, please go uh, purchase from them. Love you guys. Like, Sorry, I just did. I sent everyone. All right, oh, go. okay. Yeah, dude, good coffee, good homies. Represent. Uh, Cal, you got two shirts left. XL and a small. I'm I'm getting the XL. Oh, okay. You just got a small. That's it. Casey's. Uh, we have one small Casey, left. KCB requested the extra large, so just a small. And then we'll. I I promise we'll be getting into uh, new merch very soon. But keep an eye on uh, us and Cali Death Podcast dot dot com. I know it doesn't say it on the video, but I just said it, so I know you heard it. It did already. Um, in case you already know. And uh, I'm glad that uh, shredding the virus was uh, an overall positive experience for you guys with all the trials and tribulations that always happen in these underground tours. Very I'm glad funny. that you guys came out with a. Oh, and Casey shared his kit every night, and I got to play on it. And oh, he was yeah. just like the ultimate. Like, we all three drummers shared a fucking kit, and he was like so pro about always having it ready. And, uh, it was fucking so easy, dude. Easiest tour as a drummer I've ever done. So nice. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. I mean, I was like, fuck, yeah. I don't. I want. I hope the. I wanted to make sure everyone was comfortable with everything, and you yeah. guys felt like you were able to move shit around as necessary. It's all love, dude, and that's what it's yeah. all about. You guys it are was, all, yeah, out there to support each other. You guys are your. You guys are the infrastructure. Infrastructure <laughs> is that even infiltrators? Infa. Infrastructure. Infa. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. KCB. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like what you guys are holding everybody up together. Everybody's holding everybody up together on a small tour package doing the underground fucking DIY shit, dude. And I'm proud of you guys Thank for getting you. through that shit, dude. Like, and, and to come out with fresh with good stories and, and knowing that you guys had as much fun as you had, dude, I'm, that's the best you can hope for in that situation. So rock on dudes. I, you guys make me yeah you guys make me wish i was there to be a part of the shenanigans even even in a hot rv like traveling with your homies in an rv doing death metal shows and taking the time to do your shit on the off days hitting some good food spots that's what it's all about dude it's not about getting the guarantees i mean yes it is about being on stage in the end but filling in all that other time with good shit dude and i i love hearing that dude so all right love you guys we'll see you next week thursday as always have a great weekend rock on peace thanks again guys take care